Hey, what's up, guys? You're on the Camino Corner with Crack Cobain. Uh, today, I have two guests with me. I have Louis of High One, and I have Damaris. And uh, we're going to discuss a few cannabis-related topics, including, uh, like, what our favorite strains are, things of that sort. Uh, Amendment 3 and the election that's coming up in November. Uh, so just to start it off, I want you guys to tell me about uh, your first experience with smoking cannabis, uh, whichever one you want to start. So... How are you? Uh, let's see. Real quick, it's just high. I know the high one kind of throws people off. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. That's the Instagram thing, and I did it as a play on words. So when people are like, who are you? I'm like, the high one. Like, <laughs> but my first time smoking, I'll never forget, bro. I was in seventh grade. And it was Granddaddy Pert mm. with a grape Swisher Sweet. Okay. And, you know, you, the big homies. The older homies just want to go ahead and smoke some real quick. I ain't never smoked a time in my life, bro. Right. Like, shit. So, like, all right, if you want to smoke, you got to learn how to roll first. So that was a mission right there. You That's respectable, blunt, That though. shit sucked, bro. But you see it all wanky, and they're like, all right, if you can smoke it, you good. I ain't know what the fuck I was going to smoke, bro. I, was, <laughs> I just seen everybody do it, and I was like, all right, smoke that shit. The very first time, like, it went into my body. That's when I realized, like, yo, this is different. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, I don't know how to describe it. It was just something to me that I was like, yo, I like this a lot. It helped, you know, just, I had a lot of energy. I still got a lot of energy. Right. Well, that shit, it just made everything in my mind kind of fall in line, bro. Like, it was moving, but it helped organize it. And after I smoked that blunt, like, I just remember laughing my fucking ass off, kid. I, I swear to God, bro, that shit was so funny. And everybody was like, bro. Shut the fuck up. Hey, you just remember what it's like being the giggler and shit, No, right? for sure, for sure. And I was just laughing and laughing and laughing. And ever since then, I was hooked. I was like, yo, Granddaddy Pur Purple Swisher. Like, for me, the Purple Swisher is something that I'll hold to to the end of time. Like, okay. I love, I'm, it's major leaf all the way. Don't forget that. <laughs> but that Grape Swisher is what, is what locked me in with it. Mm. What about you, D? Uh, I feel like my first time smoking, I was already in college. I was like 19. And um, I was going through it anxiety and my cousin he was the one who introduced me to it and I feel like it helped me a lot I don't know I I didn't like taking pills when it came to like calming yourself like when, when you know your doctor prescribes you like Zimbalta or Xanax usually when you're going through something traumatic but I felt like cannabis helped me a lot and it helped with other symptoms too like my period cramps and you know, nausea, it made me hungry. I, I really wasn't eating at that time. So it, it would just help me a lot. And I just felt like this is, you know, not a gateway, but something that was healing me and helping me better myself and give me a better quality of life. So I don't know. And then I just stuck with it. It was great. Real medicinal purposes. I feel yes. that. Lou said his first was uh, Grape Swish and Sweet. I was a honey Dutch man. Ooh. Back when he had the big, the big Dutchess. Yeah, I used to love them things, man. That's yeah. that's before they brought up the little mini Dutches and all that stuff. Um, but I remember, like, good, good Miami Crip back in the days. And I remember the first time I had Northern Lights. That was, like, oh some real Zah. Yes. <laughs> See, we're Crippy. We, we really had Crippy on lockdown yes, in the sir, South, we bro. Did. And a lot of people, they tend to forget, like, Florida is responsible for OG Kush. You know what I'm saying? Nice. There's, a, there's a grower named Bubba who... He's from Florida, and he's the one who solely took it over to the West Coast mm -hmm. and showed them what we got. And then they fucking boomed with it, and they did a fantastic job with it. Right. But everybody was like, Cali this. Oh, we got to go to Cali for the OG. Mm -hmm. Nah, bro. Nah, we, we had some gas We down gave here. OG Kush to them. You know what I'm saying? And so Florida, a lot of people like to shit on Miami weed, but we have some of the best weed, in my opinion, besides other land races, you know, outside of the country. But yeah. Sour Diesel, we're responsible, fucking creepy. We was kicking ass with that shit. Man, I made some good money off of creepy back in the days. I Man. can't even lie. Everybody was fucking with that creepy shit, bro. That that did a lot of things, bought a lot of Air Force Ones. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was that was some good times. Um both being that all of us are in the cannabis industry in some uh shape or form, um what all parts of the industry have you worked in as far as uh, medicinal side, uh, non-medicinal side, things of that sort, which for us is all medicinal, but you know, the, the public sees it differently. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so. Is that for me? 
Yo. All of us. So who of wants us, to start? So. Mm, so I started, I guess the very first thing was just your normal, we'll say sales consultant. You talk to your friends. Hey, I got right. this. Preach. We'll, that's, Go a, ahead. that's a good term for it. Sales consultant. Bro, that's just what yeah. we're doing. We're I, I used to say pharmacist, but. I you, feel it's sales consultant. That's better. We're, you know, it's, you could be a pharmacist, whatever. You're selling medicine. Right. At that point, you're, I don't know. We just don't have the doctorate to say we doctors, but we damn near prescribing people. So right. shit, that's important. So I started out with that, right? Just, you know, I would smoke. Some of the homies wanted to smoke. So you go ahead and bust it down. And it's, for me, that's where it really started to grow. It was, uh, I was in a, in a place where I couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. I was really trying to work. But I was young, you know what I'm saying? I was only 13 trying to get a job. And unless you're in Miami, bro, you can't get a job at that age. And gee, shit, because ain't nobody going to give you them loopholes. Mm -hmm. Everybody a little bit more stricter. It's just different type of business. Right. So I was like, damn, what you know? can I do to go ahead and get something? Because nobody was hiring me. No, I get that. Because I remember filling out like 300 applications back when those paper applications, going to the mall and dropping them off and things of that sort. And not getting your resume and shit. Yeah, like and not getting callbacks and... Oh, being like, bro, I I'm lucky. I went to Valencia Sioux. I uh, like, I grew up going to the summer camp. Right. So once I hit 14 and I couldn't go to the summer camp, the actual like Barkin, who he was like, I guess in charge there, but then was like, you want a job? And I was like, okay. And I started like in the summer. Though, oh, you got blessed. Yeah, that's yeah, a so blessing. Right there. 14, yeah, it was. No, I was a struggle out here trying to get a job. So yeah, that was a blessing. <sighs> But yeah, keep going, Lou. Now we was, you know, I was trying to do it right. Like, get your OG tell you, you know, get a job, do things the proper way, and you try. And that's, for me, was how I got into it. It's like, I tried doing it the right way. Shit didn't go the right way. Mm -hmm. So I had to make my way. And then as I progressed, I really started getting into it for the, the medicinal purpose. Because at first, it was just recreational. Right. Like, it did help me sleep, and I had a very hard time sleeping. Like, I, I just couldn't go to sleep. I'd be up till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And then school starts at seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't want you to sleep during class. And I was a sleeper, bro. I slept there in every fucking class. That's by the time I get home, I'm up all night. Mm. So that shit helped like regulate me. And I was like, if this could do this for me, you know, what really can it do? Right. And I started seeing, you know, just watching videos of people reacting to getting dosed at minimal doses, not even a lot that I like, just 50 milligrams, 10 milligrams. And you see them already starting to react differently and their bodies fucking getting better mm -hmm. so i was like let me go ahead and see if i can do this so my ass uh, for real bro i went and I, I got a job at true leaf right i shit you not it was dope in the beginning mm -hmm. fuck true leaf <laughs> but what for me really made me say that and hold to it was they disillusioned me thinking that I was going to be in there and helping all these elderly patients and giving them what they need and educating them. Right. So I was doing that. Mm -hmm. But now they want to come to me and start telling me to focus on sales goals. You know, we got sales incentives and we got weekly goals. Mm. And my rebuttal to that was, all right, well, what if, you know, a patient comes in and we don't have the product that she needs? Right. And their response was, well, sell her something else. Like, well, she don't need that. Like, it's medicine. We're not mm -hmm. here to sell things. It's medical. Right. And they're like, well, we have goals and we have to meet a quota. After that, bros, fuck them. Fuck mm. the dispensaries mm. on that part. That's where I kind of got back into my black market. We'll call it, you know, the traditional, the legacy market. You have so many terms. But I just went back to what I knew, which was just fucking with the homies. Right. And through that, it really helped to get me started on my own growth. Mm -hmm. And that is really where I saw a change for me as far as a lifestyle change because I was being aware of what I'm putting into my body. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people talk about food and shit like that, but they don't make those changes with food. Right. I ain't make that change with food. I made the change with fucking marijuana. Mm -hmm. Marijuana helped me realize like, you know, if I'm putting this into my body on a daily basis and it's not good for me, then I need to change it. And I started growing my own because I didn't know what I was getting, where it was coming from, heavy metals, PGRs, right. pesticides, all these toxic chemicals that it was just for me to do that, like to grow, save my bread, and then I can go to the studio. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got a studio session, $60, $70. Easily. Easily, bro. And that's what, a quarter? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're like, damn, do I want to buy a quarter or go to the studio? Mm -hmm. I'm in that struggle. 
especially being a college student. Bro, college student. It's like, bro, student. it's a weed of the studio this week. What are we doing? And it's what we doing. So a lot of people tend to go ahead and go the route, you know, they'll get cheap equipment or cheap studio and mm -hmm. spend the money on Bud. I was, it was a fucked up thing, but I was being cheap. Yeah. And I was buying booty Bud. And I was like, nah, I can't buy no booty Bud, bro. Mm -hmm. Like $5 grams, $10 grams, that ain't me. You know, so I, I couldn't keep up with that. I said, I'll go ahead and invest in the studio and I'll start growing. Right. I got some seeds. OG Kush. Mm -hmm. Simple. I brought it back to our roots, bro. And I Plus. started with one seed, put it on my windowsill and just let it grow naturally. And from there, I got the passion to be like, oh, yeah, this is some shit that I want to do. And That's we started what's up. going and going. And now, thankfully, I have a team of people that were able to go ahead and provide quality cannabis for medicinal patients as right. well as recreational. Mm -hmm. But we focus more so on the medicinal side of it. Right. You know, we see a lot of patients complaining that they can't trust the quality of the product or they can't see it. Mm -hmm. So we'll you know, be as honest as we possibly can with them. We'll show them from A to Z. Like, this is how it comes. Mm -hmm. It's only being touched by three to four hands. Right. As far as, like, energy goes. Mm -hmm. You're not picking up bad vibes, bad energies. If anybody has bad energy, they can't come to the house. I feel that. It's only love, bro. These plants feed off love. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll be playing music for them. We'll be talking to them, really just giving them what I feel they don't receive in a lot of other places. Understandable. And that's now where it's gotten to me. I've been able to work with other brands, you know, other bigger name brands and shit like that, other growers. And everybody's just impressed, but I was like, damn, we didn't think he was doing it like that in Miami. Hmm. I was like, nah, we really fucking out here. And shout out yeah. to all the growers, you know, in Miami, in Florida, that really put it on for the crib because this shit ain't easy. You know, a lot of people think that you could go ahead and just start growing and get you some fucking bread. And like, we playing a different game in Florida. You know, we're not a legal state. Right. So shout out to everybody that is fighting for something they believe in, because that's ultimately what I'm fighting for, too. Mm -hmm. I don't believe anybody should tell me what I'm allowed to grow, especially as far as a vegetable or a plant or a fruit. Agreed. Yeah, if it's a natural resource that has been around longer than my existence, longer than the existence of humanity, who are they to tell me what I can and can't do with it? I feel that. 100% agreed. And what about you, D? I started actually at a marijuana clinic, um, and I learned the ropes, and I got really close with a couple doctors. You know, I, I'm, I get close with people and patients, and I really um, enjoyed learning about what products worked best for what symptoms. And then from there, I started working at Certera, and I love it there. It's great. Um, and I currently also work for a, another medical, mar well, it's actually, a, it's called Live Forever Health, and they're um, like a big, they have a, a big department, and they also do other things like hormones and, and um, other treatments, but they just purchased Rejuvamed, and they're opening a bunch of medical marijuana clinics around Florida, so it's super exciting, okay, to, from okay. Tampa to Hammocks, Fort Lauderdale, it's Awesome, and then I, I don't know. I've just stick. I stick with it, and I, I went to school. I got my certification in cannabis oil and medical marijuana, and it's just great. I love it. I enjoy it. I enjoy seeing patients flourish and improve their quality of life. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I like Lou started on the black market side, and I just always had a passion for cannabis, like. I had a Tumblr page back in the days where um, every Wednesday I did Weed Wednesday post, mm -hmm. and it was really me um, giving like feedback on cannabis strains that I personally smoked. I would take photos of it. I would break down the way it made me feel, like if it was euphoric, if it made me have like a great night of sleep. You was if a real reviewer. Me, yeah, if it made me hungry, okay. um, I would I would like rate it. Uh, I had a doobie rating system. Yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> really important. Scale. Yeah, that's I had the doobie rating system. So uh, if it was like top notch, like I remember the first time I had God's Gift, uh, that was like 10 doobies. And then like I had like New York Sour, which was like 8.5 doobies, things of that sort. So I had like a real scale of how I would rate everything. And um, I just was the person that like, same thing the homies would know, like, oh, if we want to get like some fire, we go talk to crack. Um, he would know what this is and what that is. 
And honestly, like, I kind of had people coming up to me like that since high school days. Like, jokingly enough, uh, I remember the first time one of the Marley grandchildren came up to me in ninth grade. It was some butt. I was like, yo, crack, is this fire? And I looked at him. I said, nigga, you're a Marley. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> don't know it's you, bro. But, yeah, like, people knew from earlier, like, I know my stuff. I actually care about the plants and things of that sort. Uh, me and Lou have had plenty of conversations about cannabis, so I know, like, he has a very similar passion, and it shows. Like, quality always shows when a person actually cares about what they do. Um, I, last year, got into the medical side, West of Terror, as well. And um, the thing that I do enjoy about being there is we actually – are dealing with the patients on a personal level to the point where it's like, no, nah, like we're making sure that you're getting your medicine for what you need. I'm not there to sell you some bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't give a fuck about a dollar. Like it's about you being healthy. Like I have a patient uh, that comes in that can only use twist Spencer's because he has uh, like really bad epilepsy mm -hmm. and uh, he's tried other products and it doesn't work for him. But he said he takes twist Spencer's he has like a really, like a really big seizure, and then he's good. Like he won't have one for at least 24 hours. So stuff like that means the world to me, you feel me? Like I actually feel like cannabis is something that can do a lot for a lot of people. And um, that's like my passion with it. So I get where both of you are coming from with that. Have you ever seen this video called Marijuana versus Parkinson's? I've seen it in like real life, like happen in reality, where they give them a little bit of RSO and the trembling like completely stops. Like he's steady. The, this man who could not, had no control of his body or his head or couldn't lift things or, you know, do things that usual people could do, like feed himself. Now all of a sudden is like, what would you like? Can I serve you something? Would you like something to drink? And that's just so lovely to man, see. Man, that's impressive. How about I, that video, real quick, I think if it's the same one that I'm thinking of, that guy was a cop. Yes, I wow. believe he was. It's so, very true. Wow. Yeah, retired police officer. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's sad, like, with the medical system, uh, I've seen, like, cops and firefighters that are like, man, like, I would love to be able to walk in here, but I can't because I'm viewed as this way. And it's like, damn, like, you're still human. You still have your needs. You should be able to get your medicine. That's what you need to relax and, mm -hmm. and feel how you need to feel. So rid of your pain or nice no, for like migraines instead of taking like xanax which is some people can't even function on that so yeah. i find it so crazy that they're like wake yeah, up the next we'll thing you don't remember you, anything that's crazy yeah we'll give you pills so, you know your doctor will prescribe you could go to cvs and pick up your xanax that's gonna make you like you know and you and people drive on that i don't understand but cannabis is a problem when it's natural. It doesn't mess with your organs. Like, you have a whole cannabinoid system in your body, right? To receive mm -hmm. the endocannabinoid. Right? Yeah, you got CB1 and CB2 receptors yeah. in your body. Yes. And for people to tell me that it's not good for me, but you know, it was a big thing. Like, I don't know if y'all played sports growing up, but cigarettes, yeah, bro. Motherfuckers used to smoke cigarettes at the park like nothing. Okay, hmm. Like parents yeah. would be smoking, especially during baseball games. It used games. to be something mm -hmm. popular. Like if you smoked cigarettes, you were popular. You could used to smoke cigarettes in your <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, it was Imagine crazy. eating food and some motherfucker starts smoking and blowing smoke in your face. <laughs> and people ain't fucking complain about that. But we smoke some weed. You yeah, know, that's and that's, a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. And that's a stigma that I think it's very important for, you know, all of us and anybody who's just really passionate about the plant to break. Right. You know, you got to fight for that shit. Totally agree on that. Um, my biggest topic I wanted to get into uh, with us being here with the upcoming election in November is uh, Amendment 3 and your thoughts on it. I definitely want Louis to start this. Uh, <laughs> I, I know he's very passionate about this. We spoke about it before uh, the bill was even written. And he actually, back, this is what, about almost a year ago now, when we first spoke about this, and um, you actually made me go do my research on it uh, after our conversation that we had because you had some great uh, points about um, what was being put on the ballot and uh, what they were what they were uh, reaching for and what would be ideal compared to 
what uh, is being pushed towards us. And uh, actually, I was talking to Dee about like some of the commercials that have been going around um, with this election coming up and how everything is, is being focused on trying to say uh, like cannabis isn't safe mm -hmm. and that they're trying to make cannabis safe. And I feel like that's a stigma that needs to be broken because cannabis is safe. It's just not everyone is getting access to the greatest forms of cannabis. And um, it's not about getting it from this company or that company. It's about knowing who you're getting your cannabis from and uh, making sure that it's from people that actually care as much as you should care about yourself and uh, your, your higher living. But I'm gonna let Louis take over and say his part on Amendment 3 and then we'll all pitch in. So for me, and again, I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody that has different views or opinions, but fuck Amendment 3. And I say that solely because I don't believe that all of this that we're doing right now is even necessary. Like, I have, a, I have a good friend of mine that we speak about these things, and, you know, they don't tell you how much or how many tomatoes you can grow. Right. right. And the same thing with alcohol. Like, you can buy as much alcohol as you fucking want. You could clear out the whole store. You could run your credit up mm -hmm. and max out your credit cards. Right. And they won't give a shit. Mm -hmm. And what is one person going to do with 3,000 bottles of vodka? Nothing at 50, all. Die. 50 fucking cases of beer. What does one person do with it? Because that's a lot. It's alcohol poisoning for sure. But they want to go ahead and limit how much medicine mm -hmm. we can travel with, mm -hmm. how much medicine we can purchase, mm -hmm. and the fact that they don't even allow us to grow our own medicine. Right. That's my biggest problem with Amendment 3 is that there's no home grow included. You know what I'm saying? And I understand when people was talking about it, everybody that was coming up with their petition, it had to be single subject. That was the hardest part. And I'm going to tell you, you know, last year we had this conversation. And I don't know if you remember, but I was working on my own petition. Right. And the problem that me and my partner were in encountering was we wanted to introduce so many different aspects of it. Mm hmm but it all had to first be single subject. And the right. thing for us to allow home grow, to allow you to have as much weed as possible, the mm -hmm. first thing had to be is that we had to legalize marijuana. Right. Of course. So for me, that's where I feel that Amendment 3 came and kind of blinded the people. They do have some decent points on there, like preventing people getting arrested for cannabis possession. I agree with that. Right. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see also in that we're going to do cannabis reformation and anybody that's solely imprisoned or incarcerated for m minor or major marijuana possessions but if it's solely marijuana we will release them i wanted to see them not just release them but expunge their records expunge their record and pay for that shit don't no, make them sure. pay for it you just gathered all this money truly like bro kim rivers makes so much money and the whole company makes so much money that they really want to go ahead and make it seem that as you said it's dangerous on the street right but when you have patients complaining about getting moldy products, like I'm, I, I grow flour. If you have mold on your flour, you got to throw it out. Mm, Toss it. You got to throw it out. Mold, yeah. mites, anything like that. Would you eat oh a God, fucking moldy horrible. burger? Not at all. Nah, but so what do they do? Oh, we can, we can go ahead and grind it up and put it into a pre-roll. They'll smoke it. Hmm. They'll smoke it if we sell it at $25 an eighth, $7 an eighth. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you see... And these are, like, there's proof, bro. There's people that work in their grow houses that submit mites, that submit the just bad maintenance of their farms. They have good stuff also. I can't just shit on them because they wouldn't be here if they didn't. Right. But for me, it's that standard of if you're a medical facility, you have to meet the fucking minimum quality, which is majority good. Right. It can't be the best. It can't be perfect. That's fine. But you don't see Advil. You don't see Xanax coming out with misshapes or irregularities. You don't see some Xanax hitting harder than others. They mm -hmm. are all fucking consistent. And that's how I feel medical marijuana should be. All dispensaries should be like that, bro. Like, it's not just, you know, we had a good run or we had a good harvest. Like, no, if you're a medical marijuana dispensary, these people are... consistency. Yeah, they're depending on you yes. for medicine. So you have people in these commercials saying, you know, it's dangerous what we're selling they can't even fucking allow us to test our own strains 
put my strain against one of the dispensary strains and I bet you I'll smack them. I agree. It's a fucking fact. And why? We're not using any chemicals, any preservatives, anything toxic. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put that in my body, so I'm not going to go ahead and give you that. You know what I'm saying? And people don't really see that side of it. They see, okay, well, I can just smoke. You know, I can go to Miami and smoke wherever I want. And that's great. We want that. But if that's what we want, personally, then we should all just go straight for legalizing marijuana or cannabis altogether. Because now you have hemp and you have marijuana, right? True. So you saw the dispensaries pushing for the legalization of smart and safe so that they can go ahead and also now monopolize the hemp game. Hmm. Yeah. Like, what is that, bro? So you, you see right. it. It's funny. You got hemp farmers siding with legislators to oppose legalizing cannabis. Right. Because the people who are trying to push and legalize it are just doing it for the monopolization of their companies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have a problem if they're like, all right, we want you, you know, you can grow, but we also want to sell. And we want to sell retail. We don't want to sell medicinally. Because right. that's what they want. They want the sales revenue. They want all that money to come to them. Mm -hmm. So if they're so sure of themselves that they got this good product and they good, then allow me to open up my business. Allow me to sell. Allow me to mom and pop my fucking store. And if I end up doing better than them, it just tells you they don't know how to grow. Like, to me, it doesn't make no sense. How are you going to have all this money and not provide something good? Right. You know, and I, I, I from truly, I keep picking on them, bro. They had a strain called Dutch Hawaiian. I love that shit. Mm. Mm. It was a great sativa strain. Felt good. So when you smoke something like that and then you see that that same company is also doing janky shit, it's hard for you to stand behind them. Mm -hmm. You know, we speak about minorities in cannabis. I think they said Hispanics are only 2 to 3%. Hmm. Blacks are 1%. Mm -hmm. If that. If that. And it's, and it's hard to, like, even in some of the recreational states right now, um, it's so difficult to get a license. And, like, I know in California specifically what uh, – a lot of these companies do is say the three of us wanted to open up a, a cannabis uh, dispensary in, let's say, South Central. Um, one person would have to had been arrested on a cannabis charge in the past. But what these companies do is they'll come to the three of us and say, hey, I know that you have a cannabis charge. I'm going to pay you this amount of money to get your name on my company but you don't have any ownership in the company. So it's like a one-time payout. And they're paying you for your name at that For your point. name and that's it, yeah. And you see, we speak about stuff, like, and it's important because, again, I, I keep picking on them, and I'm going to, let's fuck them. But truly have applied for a minority license in Alabama, mm -hmm. a, black, a black license in, my, in Alabama. Right. Who applied for that? that? It's really, you have to ask it, who applied mm -hmm. for that? Kim? Whose name was on that? Ooh, bro. Right. Where, where, where? Where's the color that we're speaking of? And that's the thing I want to see us have real representation. That when it comes to Amendment 3, it's not me. It's mm -hmm. not including me. I'm right. a grower. If you ain't worried about nothing else, then let me grow. And a lot of people ain't worried about home grow. That's why mm -hmm. I feel they're not as mm, adamant. Not adamant. They're, they just don't really care as much as I do when it comes to this. Because to them, they see it as, well, I could buy it, and now I don't have to worry about getting arrested. I can yeah. go to wherever. It's convenient. Right. So you really look at someone who's not on that side? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Of course. Why it's, not? It's convenient, it's but there's, it's convenient, but there's so many limitations. Like, there's limitations a lot. The limitation is three ounces. But you see, for someone who don't smoke more than an ounce a month. They're yeah. like, sure. And that's... That is the funny game when it comes to medical marijuana in Florida, is that a majority of our medical patients, I don't know if a majority, but a good amount are older. They're elderly people. Uh, I feel like it's about 50-50 now. Right? When I first started, I was seeing a lot more of the elderly. Mm -hmm. Now it's starting to be like 50-50. Bro, when I, when I first started, it was all old people. Oh, I'm sure. And they come telling you, man, I'm back in my day. Mm -hmm. You know, we, <laughs> ounces was like this. You buy an ounce, three fingers. I'm like, three fingers and four finger ounces. ounces. Yeah, and like, like, <laughs> 20 bucks. I was like, who yeah. the fuck would buy that <laughs> shit? Like, man, it had sticks, it had seeds, but, you know, we smoked it. I'm like, all right, I'm glad, you know, that you're able to come and see that. Because some people, legit, bro, they'll tell you, like, I don't feel comfortable in the store because of I've heard my of experiences mm -hmm. or because of it just doesn't feel right. Do you know how fucked up and traumatized you have to be hmm. from buying weed 
to not feel good buying weed in the weed store? Yeah, yeah, it bothers me every time. Like, I really try to comfort people every time I see them in that position because I'll have, like, a like a mom. Like, oh, my God, can you not give me a bag because I don't oh, want to walk out of here walk out with the bag. and have one of my neighbors see me. And I was the, like, the stigma. I was like, what's the problem with your neighbor seeing you? You're not doing anything wrong. Okay. You're buying medicine. Oh. I said, this is just like you going to CVS and you picking up uh, some cough syrup. Or There's it, nothing wrong with you it. You could tell her the same thing as like, you know, do they judge you if you leave Walmart with the six pack? Right. Like, are they going to tell or you if cigarettes, you cigarettes? Yeah. If you left with two bottles of wine and you have your baby in your hand, or, <laughs> no, we know her pain. Like, yeah. But if they see you with a joint, they're going to call you a bad mother, and that's the fucked up shit about it, bro. Is like, there's so many negative stigmas that the people who would, in my opinion, be benefiting the most from Amendment Three are the people who are already invested mm -hmm. into these dispensaries. Agreed. There's nothing for small business. And that's what we have to focus on because right. I don't have a stake or I don't have a stock in any of these dispensaries. Mm -hmm. You know, and I speak about this, like I think of the flowery. And I don't mean to talk shit, I love you, D. But the flowery, if I'm not mistaken, is a police owned or the family, one of the they're members. They're military con connected, right? yes. They're Ex so or are they police? Uh, no, I think, I think, I think it's, it's police and, and military. They're yeah, so it's, the it's that connection there. The, the they could be sweet, off. but that's that to me is the biggest fuck you. Yeah, it's that kind of a slap in the face. Given. Yeah, bro, it's not a slap in the face. That's like a stomp on my shit. Yeah. Like, they looked at me and said, hey, I'm going to arrest you. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to open up my own business and I want you to buy from me. Like, I mean, us, us being black and Latino, we, we get that completely because it's like, We've always had a stigma with us selling cannabis, and then a rich white man comes in with $100 million, and it's like, oh, yeah, sure. Throw it in this glass jar. Throw it in the glass jar. Say it's this. Make it pretty. Yeah. Make it say small batch, living soil. You're good to go. They'll eat it up. Make it holographic, too. You know oh, man. Like? Throw it in the Mylar bags. Bro, <laughs> make it holographic. They're fish. And that's literally it. That, to me, is something that I was like, damn, this shit... You know, you see it, and even us being black and Latino at, back then was a thing. But now, bro, it's still the same. Like, mm -hmm. let's try to sell an ounce in Wynwood. Right. Let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they'll give us tickets or if they're actually going to go ahead and, and arrest us. Hmm. Whereas, you know, these other dispensaries that may not be doing illegal or illicit things in the public view, everything that they're doing backdoor should be held equally accountable because they're medical facilities. Right. You know, they have, that's my only thing is that they all have a standard that they need to meet. And if you don't meet it, I don't know. So Amendment 3, that's, for me, it's always been a hard one because people, you know, they just want to smoke. And they're like, why, why will I wait two years for you to get your idea and keep moving forward? Mm -hmm. Because originally, our original bill was just to legalize marijuana. Right. No limitations on how much I can grow, how much I can carry, process, none of that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So that, you know. Will we see something like that? I would rather that than what people are saying. We have to start somewhere and take it slow. That actually brings me to my next question. You, that was a good segue on your part. You didn't even know. Uh, <laughs> my next question is actually, what would be your ideal outcome for recreational cannabis in Florida? To legalize it 100%. Like, it's fucking, it's tomatoes. We keep using tomatoes because that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. Oranges, vegetables, whatever you want, bro. Like. How, how can you control something that is not yours? Like right. something belongs to nature. My ideal, uh, my ideal outcome would be to see a lot more mom and pop uh, companies. Like Great. I remember um, seeing Gas House move from Atlanta to California from doing it black market to becoming a brand name. And I wanna see more small companies be able to make that transition mm -hmm. and um, just be able to, to feed their families and create their legacy off of what they uh, what they love. So like that would be what I want to see. I want to see more small growers uh, get their shine and come up because we know what these major companies can do. And I feel like sure anybody can come up with a color scheme, throw it on a bag and uh, like this is my brand. Branding's great, but how's your product along with their branding? Mm -hmm. So I do want to see. That's like that's my outlook on it. I definitely want to see more, uh, more small companies that uh, that have a care for it, 
be able to grow. I feel like you shouldn't have to have a certain amount of money and uh, certain requirements in order to get your name out there. Exactly, bro. They want you to have a license. You got to pay to have a license, and then you got to pay for the facility and have it. When it's just as you said, you should just be able to go in your backyard or go in an empty room, your living room, and start growing. In your closet? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you could grow in your closet. It make growth <laughs> sense. Like, that's, you know, if, if it's the best way for you to get started, then get started. And that's something to me is where, is exactly like you said, to see the ideal outcome. If it's legalized everywhere, then you're going to have mom and pops opening up. You're going to have, you know, you're going to be able to see it being used in other areas besides just medical marijuana and cannabis right like hemp we could use it for industrial purposes mm -hmm. you know we can build stuff with it rope clothes and it, it. it would actually help with the ozone layer and all this stuff because hemp plants can grow in 90 days and it sucks in a lot of carbon monoxide and things of that sort so if you just have hemp farmers growing acres of hemp that's also helping the environment because it grows much faster than, than the oak tree mm -hmm. so there's that as well what, what do you about think you about Amendment you? 3? Me? I'm not really for it at all. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like the taxes are going to go up first off if we become legal. You're going to be paying. I, I would go for your medical card either or because at the end of the day, you pay $75 once a year to the state, but you're not taxed on your medicine. But if you're legal, like if, have, if you go to... Um, California and Colorado. Yeah, there's like the seven tax taxes that you is pay. like double what you're paying for the product. And not only that, if it goes recreational, the percentages are going to go down. The terpene, well, maybe not the terpene. Terpenes, I feel like, are very important. You know, you don't Facts. really have to have a high THC uh, plant to feel good. And some terpenes actually give you different effects, like some plants make you hungry. They give you the munchies. Others give you a boost of energy. I feel like uh, I'm a sativa fan. I really like RM86. It's, it makes me clean my whole house, <laughs> you know? I, I don't really like indicas. I don't like going to sleep. So everybody to each their own. There's some people, I don't, I don't have trouble falling asleep, but I know several people that do, and they prefer an indica, you know? So that, in that aspect, too, it's like... I don't know. I also see patients that really need RSO and concentrates like twist dispensers and yeah. terp saps. And, you know, they they're not their focus is not flower. You know, their focus is these products because they make them feel better. Like people who have a ALS, that's uncurable, but it slows down the, the I heard, disease. I though. heard y'all say Twister, what? Twist, Twist dispensers. dispensers. It's, Twist oh my God, dispensers. it's a distillate, basically. Okay. Yeah, it's a distillate. Uh, That's what I was thinking. Like, yeah. I'm imagining the screw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The okay. And then beep, beep, yeah. So think kind of like RSO, but you know, RSO is more like the syringe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The twist, the twist dispenser is more of like a um, like a distillate that are, you twist. Are they like glass? A out, huh? Are they made out of glass? Um, no, actually, mm -hmm. it's yeah. like a like a plastic. They put in like a plastic thing. But the good thing about the twist dispenser is that you can take it orally, and you can also smoke it. It's not like RSO that you can only intake it orally. This one you could do either or. So you could put it in your weed or you can put it in your bowl or you could like wrap it around your... You can make like tarantula uh, joints with it. But I say you could cook with it. Yeah, you, yeah could. you could. Yeah, you could cook with it. Uh, yeah. We actually have a former coworker uh, <laughs> used to, used to what you call it, he used to um, buy it mm -hmm. and he would make his edibles with it yeah. and they would hit. They're really good for edibles yeah. and I like using them mostly for topicals. Like Topicals I add them for my topical cream. Mm -hmm. I make my OG a topical cream that helps with her back pain and stuff That's like that. Stuff. That is good stuff. So I like it. You used the RSO for that? I did use the RSO as well. In okay. my personal opinion, I like RSO more. I feel that. Uh, I just have a harder time finding quality RSO right, okay. right now. Who did you usually get your RSO from? What company would you? Truly. Okay. That's why. No, I'm kidding. So Walmart. <laughs> that's like Walmart of the cannabis world. No, that's factual. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I feel like we were pretty serious for the most part so far. So I'm going to ask some questions that are like more like chill. Yeah, I ain't trying to come and be all this angry <laughs> fuck Amendment 3 guy. But. No, I feel you. But, you know, you feel how you feel. Um, what What's you guys' favorite uh, device to smoke out of? I'm a flower girl. I, well, he's always like, grow up because I'll smoke, <laughs> I smoke Dutches. 
<laughs> well, sometimes I'll hit like the bowl, you know, but I just, I can't. I like rolling myself up a, a little blunt right before bed and it burns <laughs> slower. <laughs> a joint, I feel like, se me va. It goes too quick. Nah, you don't know how to roll. That's the problem. <laughs> That's probably true, too. <laughs> you said there's too much airflow in there. Yeah, I do. I do roll them pretty fast. I, I always right. say that to her jokingly because, like, I started off with Dutchess, like I said. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I got older, probably like 18, 19, I was like, bro, I remember one time my, um, with my homies, we did some dumb shit. We took, like, a Gatorade bottle, poked a hole in each side of that motherfucker, Stop. and put a blunt in each side. So it was four blunts. <laughs> and we smoked out that shit. And I lost my voice for a week. And this is like, I'm like, bro, I can't record music for a week. Hell no. Nah. I was like, fuck blunts. Put that shit down. I picked the papers up, which I was already like semi switching over to papers already. Um, I was starting, to, I was fucking with like Bob Marley's heavily at the time. And then um, that's around when Big Bamboo came out with the hemp ones. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, this shit's lit. Um, so I was fucking her, like, bro, grow up. Stop smoking this fucking Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the thing, like I have I have homies that are like big back with smokers and I'm like, nah my nigga, I'm not smoking with you because that shit's harsh. Like I like my I like my smokes to be smooth. And there are leaves that are smooth. Um I got one homie, may he rest in peace, was the only person that could get me to smoke a backwood because he would roll the leaf so thin mm -hmm. that like it felt kinda like he was hitting a joint and he felt like he was hitting a backwood. And he was like the only one. Like he knows, like all right, I could pass this to Quan. He gonna hit it. But everybody else is like, bro, don't pass that to me. I'm not hitting that shit. You good? I remember running and they got the studio one time. Cause this is like 2010. He uh, he was like smoking backwoods, and me just having fucking like thoughts off the top of my head in the studio. Said, I go, ill nigga, you smoke backwoods? <laughs> <laughs> this is like 2010, so backwoods wasn't like as big as they are now. Yeah, yeah. it's popular. Yeah, Dutchess was Dutchess still heavy, Swishes was still Swishy heavy. Sweets. Uh, yeah, uh, Dutchess yeah. and Swishes was like the thing. <laughs> and if he was like broke, he was smoking Phillies. <laughs> but but like, he said it, and I said, ill, and that nigga went and changed his lyrics from backwood to that good, and I'll never forget that shit. <laughs> I was good. like, damn, bro, I fucked this man up. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined this fucking line. Dude. I was like, my bad, That's bro. How you, know you got you got power when you make a rap with nah. these words. <laughs> I don't think I don't think bro was ready for that one. I was like, ew, nigga, you smoke backwards. And then backwards became popular. And I was like, oh shit, he was just out of his time. <laughs> for me, <laughs> I guess it just depends on where I'm at. Like if I'm inside, yeah. For the most part, I like papers. I feel that. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why it's the same way she said, like, I don't like my shit being burnt. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like smoking papers. When I go outside, if I yeah. leave the house. Unless I'm inside a building, mm -hmm. I won't smoke a paper. Because if I'm outside and I already start seeing it run or seeing the wind, I call it the wind smoking my shit. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel Yeah, right. I'm like, man, fuck in my mm -hmm. Or joint. canoes. I don't know why my joints always canoe. No, it's because you ain't rolling it right. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but <laughs> if you like those, the, the, I guess we'll call it Grabba because that's what Backwood is. Like, right. I, I like Grabba more. And I, I found a company. They're from Miami a few years ago, and I love them. I've been rocking with them ever since. They're called Major Leaf. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly as you said. It's my perfect blend, my, just, my opinion, a perfect blend of paper and gravel. And I've yeah. smoked them, and then it's not harsh. So They're super I, thin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're malleable, so you could go ahead and work it. But they still hold that gravel taste. They still go ahead and they hold that duration. So you could go outside, smoke it, have the fucking wind hitting it. And for me, bros, come like I smoked a grabba. I got I was fucking grabba packs all day. Hmm. I got a grabba pack and I got a major leaf, and I smoked them side by side. And I just stuck with the major leaf because, like how you said with the backwood, the grabba was just hitting hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you feel it. You're like, man, this shit just hurt. Yeah. And that's the funny thing about being a weed smoker, right? Like you want to do everything clean and healthy, this healthy that, but they tell you. You know, nicotine and tobacco are not good for you. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So that's the hardest thing, in my opinion, about being a blunt smoker. Like, I love blunts, but I also know that it's kind of not good for me, so I have to really take it back. And that's where, again, I fell in love with the major leaves because you know, it's just a leaf, bro. Right. They don't douse it, no chemicals, nothing. They just leaf it up, they cut it, then they send it. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I feel that. Uh, next thing, what's your favorite strain? Oof. I know that's a tough one. Northern Lights for me. Mm, I'm my first time having Northern Lights. My first time having Northern Lights uh, was 420, 2007. Oh, nice. Right on 420. And I remember running through a pack, 
in one like period of school, like running through the whole pack. And I was like, oh, I'm up. And everybody's like, yeah, but you got that shit today. I was like, <laughs> uh, for me, I, I've always been big on purples. Like it's a good granddaddy perk. Like good, like your shit got to have orange ears and stuff. I don't want that bullshit where it looks like a fucking Lakers jersey and it's and it looks like you fucking froze it to make it look that color. I don't want that shit because I've had people with with those uh those fake purple packs. Don't bring that shit my way. <laughs> if, <laughs> so I'm like them Takis pack, bro. <laughs> powdered fucking red Man. or purple shits. Yeah, so I'm I'm like, if you could get me a good GDP, I'm fucking with it. What about you, Lou? I ain't found my favorite strain, to be honest with you. I, I, I like the thrill of hunting, mm -hmm. pheno hunting, and looking for new strains. You know, there's so many that I haven't tried, bro. Yeah. Like, to tell you right now what's my favorite one, I'm going to tell you today, and then I'm going to find another one next month. Bro. That's the beauty <laughs> about smoking weed, though. Yeah, that's... So, like, for me, it's... Right now, my... Damn, it's hard to say it's my favorite. What's your I, favorite I, of what you grow? I was about to say, it's Gouda. I love that Gouda that, hit, boy. That Gouda, my that shit. was one of the first strains I ever got from you. That Gouda, that's him. And it's funny, like when you got it mm -hmm. compared to now. Now it's probably totally bro, different. Yeah, it's like yeah. if you would see it, you'd be like, oh, I don't want that shit. You <laughs> sold me that, and it's it's funny, but that's you know that's part of being a, a novice, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't know, I don't have any, you know, formal training or education. It was just learning from what people tell you, reading mm -hmm. forums, YouTubing this shit, and letting the plant really speak to me mm -hmm. and. There's been a lot of strains that I liked growing. You know, we, we grew runs. So that was a fun strain. The lemon cherry gelato was a fun strain. Mm -hmm. I have candy rain running right now. Mm. That's another cookie strain. You know, those are, they do well with the people. Right. Yeah. But for me, it's those strains that nobody's ever heard of. The ones that are really just different. Like that coffee kush. Man. Bro. I don't even know how the fuck we came into that. Bro. That was just a gift. It was, it was phenomenal. Coffee that coffee That was gosh. phenomenal, bro. That coffee kush was like it was for me. It was like the perfect balance where I can get shit done and still felt like all right. I'm relaxed. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not hurting. I don't feel any type of pain. So I, I described it as like the white girl's pumpkin spice. That's what that was. Oh God, bro! It was like <laughs> they they needed it. It made them addicted for it. But as soon as they had it, everything was okay. Mm -hmm. The whole world. Was, I was like, yeah, bro. And we released it around October, November, and it just worked. You know, and that coffee kush to me was it was a great strain to work with to run. And I think that's that's the part of it, you know. Finding my brother Nixon fucked with that heavy too. Nixon was like, "Yeah, bro, I, I like this one." And he's a big coffee drinker. So when I when I hit him, I was like, "I was like, bro, this is coffee kush." And I was like, "This is the homie Louie. And he was like, "Yeah, this is him." Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that, bro. And that's all, you know. I I just want to give good weed to to good people. Yeah. That's fair. What about you, D? Oh, you said you said Northern Lights. Lights, yeah. yeah but I'm a sativa fan, so like any little sativas to, you know, I get like my sativas. attention. What strain would you recommend for someone who's um, suffering from an eating disorder, can't eat, or isn't getting hungry? Like, what strains do you think give the best Whoa. munchies? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Got too high in here, boy. <laughs> Um, so you that's beautiful yeah he's like I'm trying to smoke some too <laughs> uh, the, so I want to make sure that I understood it correctly someone is having a problem like eating, can't eat they're not they, hungry they want to get hungry like let's say cancer patients who are not hungry and they need to eat uh, well, I guess the first thing would be like on what's available to them like into their area you know if we're speaking the medical route I like crack said I know granddaddy perp is always available for most dispensaries right. and that's always a go-to strain you know that's always going to help alleviate pain and induce that appetite that you're looking for mm -hmm. personally speaking though i will say hybrids are a better bet for that just because and again it's going to be dependent on the strain but yeah they're not as uh what is it sedative you know some of them won't put you straight to sleep like most of them will so you could have a little bit more energy to go out and wander get your activity up and in doing so you are now starting to increase your appetite. You know, you're getting your body moving. You just went for a 10 minute walk, but you're high as shit. Mm -hmm. So you just used up all your energy. Now you're starving. Uh -huh. You know, so I think that, that for me was kind of, <clears throat> that's what I would tell people if they ask me like, what strain specifically? I, you know, first, each strain is patient dependent. 
you're never gonna know everybody's different yeah, yeah everyone's different, different. different. Yeah, you gotta true. try it out that's the one thing i guess if anybody was to ask me like do i not like about weed it's that but i like it because it's like a game you can keep playing but anything that has mm, damn there's a specific you guys talking about terpenes there's a specific one that helps induce the, the stomach yeah. and the appetite yeah but what's you, your favorite terpene I know that's a tough one. I'm about to say either Mercerine or Caryophylline. Yo, you know what's funny? Caryophylline has been my favorite one. I that's love just care- the ones that we know. Yeah, just I know there's a lot when more. when we start learning about the ones that were like, oh, I love this one, but I don't know what it is. Like, uh, lime, another, another lime, one that I like lime, a lot, lime, but lime. a lot of people don't know about is Valencine. Valencine? Yeah. Teach me some. That gives you more, <laughs> it has more like orangish flavor to it. Okay. And I fuck with that one heavily. Like, it, it it's kind of like Mercine with the way it makes you feel, but you're not going to be as sleepy. So... It still gives you like that that nice balance. The one you just said, how does it compare to what I think she said? Limonene. 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 It's a little bit different than limonene, but it's it's a citrusy flavor. But instead of being like more lemony, it's more like orangey. orangey. Yeah. Okay. But it's still in the citrus. It's still family. in that citrus family. Yeah. I love I love the citrus. I love those. Nah, it's definitely a, a good route. What about you, D? You said limonene. Said limonene. limonene. <laughs> <laughs> you keep forgetting what D said. Nah, you know I'm I'm just double checking. You feel me? <laughs> Uh, and you don't got much to say, man. <laughs> this is what it is. Go get me some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight to the point. I know what I like. This one doesn't really affect you as much, Lou, because you already do this. But if you could grow your own strain, uh, what would you, what would you like go for? White Widow. No, I'm saying from scratch. Oh. Like you're creating your own strain. Oh, like my own. Yeah. That's lit. Yeah, that's lit. Like, what terpenes would you want it to have? What type of strain would you want it to be? Um, what type of effects? What flavor do you want? What look do you want? Damn, you that's a dope ass question, bro. Appreciate that. No one's ever asked me that, and I'm just think like, damn, you, you fucked me up with that one. I'm saying like, <laughs> it's, like that's this some is real a, Frankenstein yeah. shit. Like beyond Frankenstein, you're like, I want you to be God right now. Here's a blank canvas. Basically, like you you get to be the god of, of your own strain. How would you want it to be? I'm and gonna, I asked this question, and I can't give you a full answer because it's, it's so tough. Like, I was thinking this one out, and I was like, bro, there's so much things that I would want to do. Like, my look, I know, I know exactly the type of look I want. But, like, as far as, like, the terpenes and how I want to feel and things of that sort, that's where it gets crazy. I want my shit to have dumb trichomes. Mm. Like, I want my shit to look frosty as fuck. Like, if snow fell on it. You see, I I can't say too much about what terpenes I would want on it, mm-hmm. but I could tell you, like as far as my look, yeah, I, I would like it there too. I would like it honestly more dark green, like fucking, like the forest. Mm-hmm. I feel those, you know, for me are very appealing. I like purples, but dark greens are my shit. But as far as I I would say, the one thing I do know, my own strain, whatever it is, what I would want it to be is a hard hitting sativa. Okay, um, like very. I wasn't expecting that from yeah, you. Like almost like psychoactive, like psychoinducing. Like that's if I could create some shit that could make you hallucinate. Okay. Bruh. Like real deal, like some good ass fucking sativa, like like you're real cerebral. It. Yeah. Like. <laughs> no. When it comes to weed, there's never enough. You can't never get too high. You always gotta go higher. He said real cerebral with that, okay. You know, I would want something with speckles of purple, not like real purple. Mm-hmm. Like I want speckles of purple, but I want like you remember when um like when like when sour was first coming out and um like cheese, how it was like a like a brighter green to them. I would want it like that with the speckles of purple on it and then hella frosty. Now you see I would want mine like with sw- white hairs. Yeah, like swamp thing white green. Pistols. You see that shit green, mm. orange and purple. Just running throughout with my orange hairs and my orange tips. It looks like I just fucking dropped it on Jack Frost. And then you see it, you're looking at it. That's real. You're like, damn, what does this do? And when you break it open, it's sticky. Mm. Sticky. And you're like, damn, I don't even know if I could roll this type of sticky. That's sticky where you're afraid that it's not going to burn. That type of sticky. Nah. Right? And they'd be like, nah, it's too wet. And then you smoke that shit. And immediately you just, you feel, let's see, if I had to pick a flavor for it, well, I would definitely want skunk. I like the skunk flavor. Mm. When it comes to the sweetness, how people like to describe candy, mm-hmm. I don't really like candy as much. I like the really? cheese. Yeah, I like the cheese flavor, bro. Like, I'm a skunky. Okay. 
Funky you know, guy. cheese cheese is one of my favorite flavors when it came out, so I feel that. that but candy is fire, though, bro. That's a good taste. Candy's fire, but to, that's to me is where it's like, it's just sweet. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, anything, that, that's the new wave. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we speaking about what we smoked on, what we started with. Like, for me, I started with fucking, oh, the Granddaddy Perk. Mm -hmm. You know, so growing up with Crippy and Sour D, like, we had more, I feel, the just the skunkier elements of, of Bud and also yeah, things our things were shit, more pungent back yeah, then. Yeah, but our shit was coming out from wherever it was coming out. So some shit was outdoor, some shit was indoor. Mm -hmm. So in reality, we was like, you know, you have a lot of different options. Right. And you were able to see what really can come from it, that candy smell, bro. That's why I feel a lot of people just kind of fall asleep on land races. If you go back to land races, mm -hmm. Shit from Thai, the Afghan Kush. Oh man, bro, Mexico, Colombia, they have mm. real good, earthy, flavorful, fragrant strains. You know, they're not mm -hmm. super sweet. They do have the the lemon taste to it, or they right. might have you know the citrusy taste. You know, I've I don't like grapefruit, but I've smoked a strain that tasted like grapefruit, mm. and I liked it, which was weird. You know, and I'm like, damn, that to me is, is is that. So I I would want mine at the end of the day to have that. Just that heavy skunk cheese profile with a slight undertone, just a slight undertone of something spicy. Okay. So we um we had a strain that had came through the store one time, uh that was like in development. Okay. That had a very guava, ooh, uh, scent to it, and bro, like, I I was like dying for that strain to become like official. Because, bro, like, it smelled amazing. It looked amazing. And, like, you, like, I, like I said, the sweet gets me at times. And I was like, bro, like, this is really, like, an amazing smelling fucking strain. And it looks good. Like, it was, it was green, too. It wasn't, like, there's, like, no purple to it. It's, like, nice and green. Uh, very orange pistols on it. So, like, it, it had, like, that older look that, uh, that we don't see as, as, Fluently now, like it's not out there as much because everybody's going for like these deep purples now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, bro, I was like, this this is one of the ones. And I hope that they bring this shit in. Um. But yeah, I feel like D. What would be your? Well, after both your descriptions, I feel like I'd be the worst grower, and my <laughs> would be the most basic little flower ever. I don't know. I feel like I'm really into the greens. Mm -hmm. The greener, the better. Like fresh, like. Dieselly-ish okay. smells, um, and like w white frosty. Mm -hmm. I don't like it that sticky, because then it's just annoying to break it up. Like it's stuck in the grinder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. That fight I, be worth it sometimes. I, I get it. I mean, well, yeah, that, that is true. The fight <laughs> would be worth it, but oh, sometimes I'm like, oh my goodness, it took me so long to just. <laughs> Get it broken down. You stuck in there. You gotta get a stick, a toothpick. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time having some bud that was so sticky that I was like, bro, I was like, this shit not gonna smoke. And I sent one of the homies to buy some crippy to mix in with it. This is like, this like, high, this like college days. I'm like, bro, this shit not gonna smoke by itself. I was like, go down the street. I was like, go to the homie, get some crip. We gonna mix this shit in. And as soon as I did that, it burned properly. I was like, yeah, this him. Yeah, this is, I was like, this is what we needed. I was like, this, this is getting going. Yeah, I was like, this little salad gonna, gonna get the job done tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would be your ideal munchie food? Like, what's your go-to? Mm. I'm gonna let you go first. Me? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, stop, I'm a fatty. I love everything, pizza, I, <laughs> Italian, Cuban. <laughs> I don't know. When you have the munchies, you'll eat anything though. Like, you'll make. Yeah. Like the the weirdest creation in the kitchen. You're all of a sudden a chef, mm -hmm. and you're making a full blown three course meal with like five ingredients that you got in the kitchen. Like when you're high. So I feel like any any food is a just good munchie food. Just, yeah. Whatever you see. What the first thing? I got you. What about you, Louis? It used to be chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate was my shit. Yeah, but then I started trying to be healthy, and <laughs> bro, it's just fucking sad. <laughs> Yeah, um, I like French fries a lot, but it takes a long time mm -hmm. for me to make them. Like, you just got to fry them. So my go-to now is, like, you know, just fruit, maybe, like, strawberry or an sure. orange. But there's always, for me, bro, like, I always have a sweet tooth. It's going to be candy. 
Like if I'm high as shit, mm-hmm. what do you want? Some candy, some chocolate. Give me a milkshake. I don't give a shit. Just has to be sweet. Her, her. Mine is weird. Like I'm really healthy when it comes to munchies, and it started like when I stopped eating beef and pork. That I um that I got like on this health kick when I when I was smoke. My go to is veggie burgers. Ooh. Like give me like a. You know how to have like the pita rounds that yeah. are like wheat? Give me that with a veggie burger with some cheese on top with some fucking uh, bean sprouts, like the alfalfa sprouts, and I'm in love, bro. You see, that's that was my problem. I couldn't, not that I couldn't, I just never wanted to take the time to cook. Mm-hmm. I wanted Well, it, this, I would do the veggie burger quick. I will throw that bitch in like the air fryer. Ooh, and that's lit. Yeah, air two, three minutes. Game changer. Yes, yeah. it is. Like two, three minutes and you got your veggie burger ready to go. So yeah, like yeah that's that. like that's, that's a, like my way see, to now go. You, now you're making me hungry, bro. <laughs> my bad, but I had to ask. All right, uh, what would be what's like your go-to movies to watch when you're high? What it doesn't have to be a specific movie. Like what type of movies do you go for? I always go for comedies. Okay, I feel or that. Or like, I guess thrillers that make you think. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not shit just to scare you. Like real things that like you. Like aliens and stuff. Yeah, like not not that I want to I want to no. think about like like the Da Vinci Code. Mm. Oh, okay. You know what okay. I mean? Like you want to think and re- or Interstellar, bro, and it's like it sucks when you're high cuz you can't miss anything. Right. But you get to experience that movie and really like lock in. I feel mm-hmm. like for people when they smoke, you know how most people daze out? Yeah. If they do the opposite and lock in, you experience shit so much more profoundly. Mm-hmm. Obviously your your senses are heightened and you feel of things, course. so it's like you really can appreciate the colors and you can appreciate, you know, the sound behind it. And that's why I like going with comedy movies because they're right. lighter, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So there's more brighter colors, the music's better. And I, I tend to work while I watch movies. Right. It's not like I can just sit down and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. I have to do something. And that's, you know, it's comedies, bro. You hear it, the laughing. Um, and then with the, the thrillers, again, that music, at least for me, when I'm high, mm-hmm. makes me feel like, oh shit, something's about to happen. Like, I feel and, that. And you, it makes you, you know, just, I like that feeling. It makes your senses more heightened. Yeah, bro, it's, it's that paranoia fucking creeping in, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, shit, what is that? So, what you got? With me, bro, it's, uh, I like comedies as well, but I also like documentaries. Ooh. Like, I'll yeah. sit down and watch a documentary and learn some shit. High as fuck. Yeah, high as fuck, bro. Just smoking and yeah. watching that shit. Yeah. I'll, like, I'm, I'm the type of person, I'll throw in a documentary where I'll hop on YouTube, and I'll watch, like, Earn Your Leisure or something. And it's like, oh, okay, like, I'm learning, and I'm actually, like, so, yeah. not only just entertained, but I'm soaking in the information, True. and I'm actually, like you said, I'm locked in, I'm more focused because I'm high. Yeah, bro. So, that's it for me. What about you? I like ancient aliens. And okay. Like, that's a good one. Right? And, like, some, you know, murder documentaries. Got you. Now, ancient aliens be teaching you a lot of shit. Right? And you're like, it makes you question history, too. You're like, yeah, why do they have... All these depictions and i mean not just aliens like I, I, in general let's just say like mermaids and and these fairy tale creatures dragons like how is it that so many parts of the world had like the same or very similar depictions like when they mm-hmm. didn't even have any communication at that time mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy so do you believe you in any of them oh yeah for sure 100 percent. okay what about you louis oh, for sure 100 <laughs> percent. i believe i believe like there was, I was reading this thing a couple of years ago that said that, like, there are no lizards and shit like that. They're all just small forms of dragons. And that shit had me thinking. I'm like, okay. Like, snakes and all. Like, Well, evolution. Supposedly, yeah. we came from monkeys. So why nah, can't snakes and lizards? Well, I'm saying supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> when, it com- when you come to reading the books of evolution, <laughs> that these scientists that right. All right, so... so I if, don't believe we came from if, monkeys. If we're talking but, about people coming from monkeys... If you told me Caucasians came from monkeys, I would believe that more than you tell Why me that not? we all came from monkeys. We all came from monkeys. No. <laughs> Caucasians to everyone. The funny, but that's what that's that's just what these scientists. I'm about to say like there's bro, some other scientists that. that like to play the game that what if the aliens mated with the monkey and that's where we came from. Mm. Makes sense. Like instead of just taking the monkey and evolving it, right. they took their genetic code, mm-hmm. mixed it with, with the theirs. monkey. And then they made us. Okay. That to me kind of fucked me up a That's little bit clean. more. That shit, yeah. it was clean, but I was like, damn, like, why the monkey? You know what I'm saying? Like, out of all animals, 
and if they're already, I feel off, like it wouldn't have been monkeys specifically. I feel like it would have been like chimpanzees. Well, the chimp. just some type of ape, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. why the ape? You know, it's even that like because their their um, mo- mobility, like their hands and their feet, are more. They do have opposable thumbs. Yeah, and and they can communicate. Like Coco, she used to talk sign language with people. You know, yeah, and they have true. more of a. Just like supposedly dolphins are like super intellectual and intelligent. And yeah, they're also rapists. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I have seen that. Dolphins also like to get high. Yeah, they dolphins. do like oh, to yeah, get with high the, with, with the, the puffer uh, fish. The puffer fish. Yeah. Jaguars yes, they also do. do that. Jaguars will gnaw on a root. I, I forget the name of the root, but they'll gnaw on that shit until they get like a little bit of a buzz. Mm. I mean, well, you see cats with catnip. You do see cats with catnip, but I ain't never heard of a jaguar just like gnawing on a root. You That's know? wild. And, never yeah, heard that when, either. When, when I saw that, I was like, yo, this. The Amazon's a wild place. Bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are y'all uh, solo such smokers or you like to be like around people? For the most part, I'm a solo such smoker. And for like the past year and a half now, if I do smoke with the homies, mm-hmm. I smoke my own blunt. Personal party? Yeah. That's how I am. And there was nothing more than just like the paranoia of germs. I feel that. You know, like I don't know where you are Mm -hmm. or have been. And I'm not discrediting you, you're a clean person, but I don't know. And since I don't know, yeah, I would rather go ahead and protect myself. So like, you know, you see some people, bro, they'll get butt hurt. Like, damn, you wanna smoke with me? Like, no, I don't. And if you get offended by that, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I, I, I have an older cousin that I actually learned that from. I used to, be the homie that I roll a three five in the joint and pass it to you like let's get high, and um I had a older cousin that came up from the Virgin Islands one time, and he um he had hit my mom and was like yo I need some weed so my mom was like yo uh, your cousin's in town he needs some weed I'm like all right so I'm pull up to the house we good, and um I gave him what he needed and he bust down two joints and he handed me one and I was like okay we personal parties that's what it is and I had I had already had a joint roll so I'm like passing him a joint and he's like no nah, corn I'm good I'm da 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 cuz you know they they break down like that's why the whole grabba thing I, like I understand it cuz in the islands they uh break down what everybody calls fronto but in the islands we call it fanta and they put it in, in the joints cuz you know the uh it's like a grabba leaf right? yeah the tree in, the tree in, in like uh in the islands isn't like the tree in America like I know you've probably seen like the, the Jamaican videos when they go up in the mountains, yeah. how the herb looks. It's like very organically grown. Um, it, it looks completely different. It's not as sticky. You're talking about the tobacco leaf? No, I'm talking about the cannabis. Oh, okay. Yeah, like if you look at the cannabis that, you, that they have in like the mountains, like Jamaica and shit like that, compared to the cannabis that we have over here, the look is different. It looks more like what we would see in the High Times magazines from like the 70s and it's 80s and stuff natural, like that. Out, very, outdoor. very natural. Yeah. Outdoor. And, um, like for for smokers like us that come from over here, you smoking one joint is not going to get you high, because we're so used to these high THC levels and things of that sort. Um, but I I can't lie, it's probably the cleanest smoke I've ever had. Is smoking that. out there. I believe that hundred percent. You would, I swear, you'd smoke all day. Like joint after joint, and it's no problem. But like I said, it's such a clean smoke that you don't like. There's there's really no paranoia, nothing. Like you're just enjoying yourself, and uh, there's like there's no harshness to the weed, which is a problem sometimes here, where certain grows. Um, bro, it just feels it feels so much more natural. It feels like the most vegan weed you can have. Ooh, vegan weed. I yeah. love that. Like oh, I love <laughs> that's that. that's the best way to describe it, bro. It's like the most vegan weed you can have. Damn. True organic cannabis, bro. Like, that's what I would love to see. You know, that I know no one asked, but that doubles back to Amendment 3. You know, if you fucking let people go ahead and just grow their own shit, Mm -hmm. grow outside, grow inside, wherever, bro. Just the quality that we could provide for ourselves would be dope. No, for sure. Everybody answered that one? Yeah. You answered that one? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, <laughs> I'm just. No, did you? No, I don't think you I'm answered la- that one actually. Yeah, I don't think so either. To yeah. Be honest with you. Do you like to smoke solo or in the group? Uh, both. I. I what I do smoke. you prefer though? Like, what's your ideal situation? I don't know though, cause like sometimes with my homegirls, if they don't smoke with me, I'm like, damn girl, you're gonna have me smoke this by myself. I don't know. Like, you're not gonna be on the same tip with me. So. 
But I don't, like, I'm not a fan of smoking with strangers that yeah, are sharing. Not for Because of germs. No, you see, even, scary. even my homies, like, now we all, I don't, I don't smoke with my homies like that. I like, you know, I'll smoke with the homies. Yeah. I don't but, smoke. Mm -hmm. I share my. You don't share it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's too much stuff going around nowadays to, to be really passing that like that. You, you better off. <laughs> to yourself yeah, like <laughs> seven different strains of covid or when people say yeah. they want to match and motherfuckers like you roll you know like crack say he roll a three five in a joint and i'll come back to you with a point five joint yeah bro if i'm rolling with the homies i'm not stingy yeah like if you so don't match me, stingy with me match me that's what matching means it's not contribute i ain't say contribute for that roll your own shit right and we were like that from college days when we really didn't have it like that bro like we were pitching in to get an ounce so yeah and you see, I was like that since middle school, bro. Like, whatever I put down, mm -hmm. you put down. If you don't put down, you ain't smoking, bro. Get from around me. Like, and that, it was something that really helped, I think, me mm -hmm. kind of just stay away from certain types of people. Because, you know, some people don't give a shit what they smoke. True. So they'll tell you, yo, I'll match you. Like, all right. And they'll roll the fattest joint. Of some garbage. Some booty Man, ass Man, if you match shit. me, you better bring something of quality. Like, And, you know, it's like, that's that really helped me just kind of like, nah, I want my own shit. Like sharing and splitting money with other people to get cheap shit no yeah. i rather have go. you ever been to a dispensary and gotten some stuff and you were like oh my god so mad it was a waste of your money in your script i went to cure leaf i think it was like one of the first like it was the first time that i had ever gone to and they're like oh you get three 3.5s and you get three for free so i was like oh shit that's i lit. buy three 3.5s <laughs> and i get three for free that's awesome so i i get my purchase right i go home i smoke the first one and I'm like this garbage. It, it, it <laughs> honestly was like if they grabbed grass from outside and Damn. they were like, "Here you go." It was terrible, all of them. And I was like, "I might as well have smoked CBD." It mm. was so terrible. Give me a refund for all this weed, bro. Yeah, to be honest, I was so upset. You've never gone through that. You've never had like a bad for purchase. me. My bad purchase was my first experience getting bud because I just got my car. This was when Florida just. Uh, like seven years ago. Yeah, 2014, we just yeah. went medicinal. And mm -hmm. I just got my card. I felt so dope. I was one of the first people with their card. I was like, ha-ha. I go, and it was, I think they called it Knox at the time. You remember? Mm -hmm. Not, I don't know if that's where it transformed into Cure Leaf or what, but there was a dispensary called Knox. Right. And I got a, a Jack Herrera cart from them. Mm. That shit was fire. I was like, man, this shit's dope as fuck. But I asked them for flour. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, nah, we don't have flour. You have to go to another dispensary. And I was like, all right, this is bullshit. Like, how do you not have flour? <laughs> right. They're like, no, nah, we just don't have flour. I was like, okay. So I go to True Leaf, and I ask them for flour. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, we have, you know, sour diesel 3.5 for $30. And they have, at that time, they had insane fucking deals. Right. Now, I'm sure they still do, but their biggest deal at the time was spend $150, you get $150 off. Oh, Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Right? All you got to do is spend <laughs> fucking 150 and you get the shit for free. Yeah. Bro, so I was going in and my doctor, he was a funny doctor. He was one of those doctors that would write your maximum prescriptions mm -hmm. and not give a fuck. And he was really, he was really lenient about that. And I right. liked that about him. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't know what he did wrong, but he did some shit to where he had to like run to New York because he was prescribing too many Patients. High doses, yeah, yeah. and they were like, of yeah, they were just red flagging him, and he's like, I'm out. So, that's a side story. And uh, Dr. King, sorry, I was, sorry. <laughs> when you I said that know. name, Dr. the King first person I thought of was, was Martin Luther. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> no, what? No, 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 like your doctor, because there was a doctor who he would also prescribe like good prescriptions, and I know he moved to New York, and he was it was Dr. King. It might, might have been. I, would, I have to go through my emails. Would you go to Miracle Leaf? Maybe. Maybe it was through Miracle Leaf. I can't remember, but I think so. Did you go to, like, South Beach or Wynwood? No, it was, it was in Boynton. Mm. Oh, my God. You went far. Yeah, it was in, it was in Wynwood. Or, no, it was in Boynton. No, Boynton Beach. There's a location still, in Boynton Beach. Yeah, it was still yeah. in Miracle Leaf. But anyways, yeah, yeah, it was, they have so I went to True Leaf to get some flour, and this is when they had them in the ceramic pods. Okay. And I was like just confused because they brought me out a jar probably about like this big and you mm -hmm. see three pods doom, doom, doom. Oh, and I was like what do I do with this and yeah like, you vape it and I was like how do I vape it they're like mm -hmm. oh you have to buy 
the volcano. What? Like, yeah. So for you to use this, you have to put it in this machine, and then it fills up the bag, and you can go ahead and vaporize it. It's healthier than smoking. Yeah, it's more pure. I was like, okay. That's one of the best ways of How much smoke. is this machine? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's $150 and I got this coupon, I'm going to go $700. $700. Damn. That's crazy. Bro, I was like, damn. What is How this? big was the volcano, though? Regular size volcano. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. it was a good volcano. Yeah, yeah but, but still, yeah, you don't, 700. You don't expect to go no. anywhere for medicine and, and spend yeah. 700. Yeah. On, the on the not machine. Not even on the machine. Yeah, it's like, hey, we got your CPAP machine. Now you got to buy the medicine. Like, <laughs> Damn. When you could have, you could get a volcano from. I got a volcano one time at a like a, it was like kind of like a rip off, like a Dollar Tree almost, but it was like run by Solo Indio, mm -hmm. and and he's like, oh I got I got I saw the volcano and I was like how much? He's like ninety nine for you and I was like sold a hundred bucks, <laughs> yeah, it, bro, and that's a good deal, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And was seven hundred. Seven hundred at the time, and like, I bought the I bought the diesel because I I was like how would I get it out and. You got to give credit. You guys work at dispensary, so I give mm -hmm. y'all credit for trying your best not to tell the patient how to break the rules while telling them how to mm -hmm. break the rules. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, how do I get this? And he's like, the guy literally looked at me. He's like, if you can figure it out, you can smoke it. Mm. I already knew what that meant, bro. I went home and I fucking broke them shits. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'll never forget my mom's face. My OG looked at me and she's like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because I'm <laughs> sitting there picking all the fucking shards of the ceramic out of my butt. Damn. I look like a fucking cracker. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Like yeah. I'm like, oh, mom, I got to smoke this. And she's like, bro, that's that's not good. Nah, you shouldn't be not at all. That. And I was like, I'm going to smoke it. It's going to be the best thing ever. Smoke it, put it in my blunt. It was good, but the mental stress that I had to go, go through, through just to smoke. Yeah. Bro, you would have been like, for that, i just go see my boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Real quick. And that, to me, was my worst experience of all time. Like, I'll never, because I was trying to do it delicately, like an egg, because I didn't want yeah. all those microfibers to go right. into my blood. So I'm like, tum, 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 tum. That's, oh an, that's an insane route. I, lo I lost my patience, and I went, fuck. Hmm. And that shit just busted open. I was like, damn. And now I see all the pieces of the shit in the bud. And, and you're like, oh, man. After that, I didn't go buy bud from the dispensary until they released flower in flower form mm -hmm. you know and when they did that they wouldn't even let you see the bud which is retarded yeah, which and, well, and most still you still can't really yeah, yeah. Most yeah. Still can't. i think cookies is one of the only places where they have the um where they have like the little look through mm -hmm. where you can Sunnyside see Sunnyside well, too see, i think has it and that's and what's funny to me is true we not we but truly have had that as well yeah, they had I heard they had it. But during COVID, they took it out because then people couldn't smell it. They it took it out before COVID. Hmm. Oh. And they did it, in my opinion, for the sole reason of you get people to buy based off their knowledge. And if they have very mm -hmm. little knowledge, they'll buy whatever. You right. Know what I'm saying? So you're going to make a profit. Like these people don't know the difference in strain names. You tell them it's a sativa, but it's not the same sativa that they got last week. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get different effects, but they don't know. They just hear sativa. They'll buy mm -hmm. it. And that's Trump. kind of the shitty thing. But there's good people like you guys that go ahead and teach them like, hey, just so you know, this ain't the same thing. No, you know, for I real. tried it personally and these are the effects it gave me might be different for you, but just be, you know, heads up. And those types of my interactions are, are My favorite thing is the people that ask you your opinion and then they jump on Leafly. Oof. <laughs> and it's like, why did you even ask an opinion if you're going to go on Leafly anyway? You really don't care what I think. Yeah, if you just, and it's okay that you don't care what I think, but don't ask me my opinion, then just go on Leafly. If you want to Google what someone else said and not the person who's working with the yeah. product, go ahead and just Google Leafly it. And I've, I've had that happen with a few people where it's like, They'll see a strain name that's like specific to this dispensary and like, oh, I'm going to go on Leafly. Oh, I don't see it. I'm like, I know you don't see it. <laughs> it's specific to this company. And I'm giving you the information that you want to know. But if Leafly makes you feel more comfortable, by all means, go that route. You know, I can tell you where the parents are and you can look that up on Leafly if that makes sense for you. But if I'm telling you, you're not going to find this name. Yeah, because like, it's like a, a strain made from. From two different, yeah. If I'm like, I can give you the parents. The parents are gonna be on Leafly for sure. Yeah. But you're not gonna find the name that you're looking for on there because Leafly is ran by us. If you think about it, it's users going on there doing these reviews and so, updating the strains. Yeah, and updating the strains. Yeah. So if a user has never been to this place and had this strain, you're not gonna find that name on there. 
And I think a lot of people don't realize that. Like, uh, I remember when, when Runch was first coming out, and everybody was like running on 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 Leafly, like, oh yeah, I got this runs that that runs that and gelato. Remember when when all the different uh, gelato oh, yeah. trends coming out? Bro, gelato, gelato and mimosa. I was so tired of that already. Every gelato time Gelato fucked sing. up so many growers mm-hmm. and people. Just really the growers, because I guess it didn't fuck them up. Just bad bad people took advantage of dumb people, hmm. and you know phenols, all the different phenols of gelato, and that's where we now have all these people re rocking and renaming. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You see so many different types of gelatos. Baki gelato, wasabi gelato, hmm. old man gelato. Then they start renaming it to shark lotto, shark runts, mm-hmm. shark bullshit. And you smoke gelato 33, the same gelato 33 in seven different bags. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That I like gelato a lot. It was a really good strain. Really. Hello. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, she might check be in the in back. There. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I, I've definitely seen that. Like, I remember having some Gelato 33 in Vegas, and I was like, this is bullshit. But then I had Gelato 33 here, and it was like, okay, this shit hits. Mm-hmm. But I, I get it. It's different growers, and it's different, it's different regions, so it affects you differently. Yeah, bro. Okay. Definitely the growers are going to have a major impact. And that's why it's important to have good growers. Mm-hmm. You know, good growers gonna give you good cannabis, and then you could have a good time and enjoy it. And the cycle continues. You spend right. good money. You know, so I think more than anything, anybody who's working at a dispensary, like they have to really take that responsibility and pride within themselves. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't want to work there, that's understandable. But if you are gonna work there, you got to make sure that you are doing everything you can to provide quality medicine. I think that's something that a lot of employees at dispensaries don't realize. Like, you, you're medical employees. You're medical professionals. Mm-hmm. You don't go to a hospital and see these people bullshitting. At all. You know what I'm saying? It's because they know that it's life or death. Somebody may not die. Like, not everybody works the ER. Right. Yeah, but you'll probably give them a really bad night. But the hospital still has so many different operations Mm -hmm. that there are people who can help with people who are Mm -hmm. staying there over the weekend. Or they need a little bit more therapy. Like, And I think it's, it's really that, bro. Like, these, you know, these people can do whatever they want when it comes to different strains and different that. But as long as you're educated and you are educating, you'll always have the one up. For sure. So we spoke about OGs, and I love OGs, Mm -hmm. and I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite OG strain? Like, I was big on Larry OG. I fucking love Larry OG. Like, anytime that shit floated around, I was buying as much of that shit as I could. That was a good one. That that was, like, one of my favorites. That and Irene. For me, OG Kush is always going to be the name because mm-hmm. it was one of the, my familiar ones, but Fire OG. Okay, I remember when that came out. Fire OG, for me, was a really good sativa, mm-hmm. but still had OG qualities. Right. And that's something that I like for my mornings. I'm a, I'm a, a little bit more lethargic in the morning. Mm-hmm. I like you know to think that I'm bursting with energy, but sometimes you're just a little bit slower. So when I'm slower on those days, that's where my mind would be like, yo, I want to be up, mm-hmm. but not dealing with people. So. So I'd smoke some fire OG and like that would give me, you know, the just the properties to be relaxed. My body felt numb. I was good. I wasn't too engaging, but my mind was fucking racing. Like I was ready and getting my task done. You know what I'm saying? I, was, mm-hmm. I like that one for me. Fire OG is always going to be my second one right after OG Kush. I feel that. I, I've only had like OG Kush. Okay. But I do have a question. What's up? So what do you think OG really stands for because some people want to say it stands for original but i've heard that it stands for ocean grown mm-hmm. ocean grown right that's what i've heard mm-hmm. and that's what i'm sticking with right, right? me too like it just like makes... it's cultivated by th- the ocean and um, i mean that makes sense as to like the salt water may affect the terpenes right yeah that's what like, it, the form i, of I would want to think that but that's like me thinking someone grew it on south beach you know what i'm saying and i possibly th- didn't and that's where, if they didn't, how can we call it ocean grown? And is it because, like, the air travels and uh-huh. you have particles from the sea getting the salt, to your plant? Yeah. Mm. I feel like it would make that's sense like That's a good like question. That, right? right? Yeah. I feel like it would make sense like that. Because different plants cultivated in different areas cause, like, a different outcome. Yeah. So. What was the one strain that you were, like, hyped to try and you got that? She was like, this is garbage. White rhino. Mm. 
because I, I don't know why I thought it was gonna be like White Widow. Mm -hmm. But maybe it was just the one that I like the strain that I got specifically. It was not not what I expected it to be. Her. What about you, Louis? Mm, a strain that didn't really like live up to its hype. Mm -hmm. I got two. Yeah, tell me yours. I'm going to have to think of some. Blueberry? Just this, just Blueberry? Blueberry. Okay. Remember when Ludacris came out with Blueberry Yum Yum? Yeah. Oh, my God. I searched for Blueberry. When I got that shit, garbage. Oof. And the second one, Blue Dream. Well, isn't Blue Dream? Blue Dream is a, uh, a, a, a derivative of a Blueberry. blueberry. Yeah. Yes. Straight, yeah. But I'm going to tell you what I had. Have soup. you ever heard of Blue Cookies? I'm sorry to cut you. Blue Cookies I had and it was pretty good. Okay. I like blue cookies. I like blue cookies. Back to what you were saying. So I had some super blue dream, which was super silver haze, crossbred with blue dream, and I loved it. Huh. But regular blue dream, my boy Nixon loves regular blue dream. For him, it makes him creative, and he could write all day. Me? I ain't like that shit. So, like, everything affects everyone differently. But blueberry, bro, I hated that shit. For me, what it was, I think... It was Maui Aui. Maui Aui. Maui Aui. Maui Hawaii. That was overhyped by fucking, by Half Baked and a, Kid Cudi. I was about to say, Kid Cudi fucked yeah. me up with that one. Yeah. I was listening to that shit and I was like, oh, this Maui Aui is going to be the fire. It's still the fire. Mm -hmm. Nah, bro, because I had Pineapple Express, real Pineapple Express, and I had it Very with good. Some, some peoples who they were connected to a grower or they just mm -hmm. had a really good source because this shit, like, you can tell when something comes straight from the harvest versus mm -hmm. something that's been processed. This shit came out, bro, and I was, it was beautiful, you know what I'm saying? We was in high school. Yeah. And I was like, damn, how these niggas, how do they find this guy? Hmm. So, I'll never forget, we only put a bowl's worth, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Smoked it with five people and I was high off my fucking ass. It mm. was the 420 of Easter. Okay. I'll never forget that. That was one of the dopest 420s of all time. That 420 Easter, I was like, yo, let's do some like resurrection shit. We'll go ahead <laughs> and make Jesus mummies or Jesus joints. And we got that Pineapple Express. We couldn't get to any of our activities. You know what I'm saying? Like we mm -hmm. just smoked that one shit. And I was like, yo, I loved it. Got the Maui Wowie thinking it would be a similar fucking reaction. Garbage. Bro, it was the complete yeah. opposite. That's, that's the worst, honestly. That does sound horrible. Yeah, it was, it was disappointing. To say the least. Um, shit, I'm going off the top. I'm not even asking no questions off the phone anymore. <laughs> but that's what I like to be, though. Like, I like things that just organically flow. Just like, just like weed, bro. Just let yeah, it grow. Literally. It don't take too much. Shit. Um, do y'all have any questions? How do y'all feel working? at dispensaries like what are your personal opinions your feelings oh uh, I'll, I'll start so i love the dispensary that i work at mm -hmm. i love my team like great management fucking great staff okay. where it's crazy our entire store for like is literally a minority store it's blacks and latinos we're all creative people everyone does something either sing raps Something, bro. Like Everyone we're all creative. Like, yeah. It's it's amazing. That's dope. And and um, I love it because everyone there actually cares about making sure that the patients get what they need. So it's not anybody that's just there because oh, I like to smoke weed, so let me get a job in the weed industry. It's actually people that give a fuck. What I don't like is uh, the limitations that okay. are that are set by the state. I hate when a when a patient comes in. And it's like, oh, I need this. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Let me check your rec. And it's like, ah, oh, fuck, I can't sell this to you because you don't have enough rec to get this. That bothers me because I feel like I'm doing you the service, even though it's not my fault specifically. Because I know, like, damn, you might, you might be in. You uh, might need it. Yeah, you might be in a situation where you can't get through your day without this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can't do anything to help you get it. So that bothers me. Okay. But, but I love where I work, though. Um, I do have patients that come in all the time that give me like feedback on, on uh, their experiences at other dispensaries. And they're like, bro, I love coming here and I hate having to go other places because like when I come here, you guys greet me, you have a smile on your face. Yeah. You actually have great fucking conversation with me about 
the product about your day. Like I um I was going out of town. I was supposed to be going out of town. Like I told you I had gotten sick, I didn't go again. But um I had a patient I had spoken to before I went on vacation. And he comes back in and he's like, Hey man, how was your trip? And I was like, bro, I didn't get to go. He's like, damn, what happened? And I was like, well, I got really sick, so I wasn't able to go. And he was like, damn, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. So it's like you're having genuine connections with people and you get to know them to get to know you. You're, you're calling out their, like, you're, it's not just, hey, how you doing? Yeah. It's, hey, what's up? Da, da, da. You're saying their name as they're walking in. Yeah, you're really getting yeah. to know them and build, yeah. build something with them. Like, it's real rapport. And you know, like, what affects certain people in certain ways. Like, I told you about that one patient earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, he walks through the door. I already know what he's coming for. Mm-hmm. And I'm asking him, hey, how have you been? Uh, have you had any today? Things of that sort. How are you feeling? You feel me? Like, that's what I like about it. What about you, D? I love it. I love my patients. I love my staff. I, I like coming into work. I just, it doesn't feel like work. It feels kind of like... Um, no, it's family. Like, it really yeah, feels like family. Yeah, you're showing up and to your family's house and, you know, you have your friends and, and loved ones coming in and, and getting medicine from you. And, and you do, you build, like, a bond, a relationship. Like, you already know uh, what these people are suffering from. Like, you know, they have their families. You know, I, I, there's a lot of patients that come in and I'm like, how's your kid? You know, I already know, how's your husband? How's this? And how's your mom feeling? You know, we, we already have, like, this relationship. And, and they really look at your advice and you know and and take your um take your thoughts recommendations yeah. yeah yeah they're sweet and you know i i hate uh saying that jobs feel like family because in a lot of places you're just a number mm-hmm. but no like at, at our dispensary it's really family bro like yeah, like we we text each other outside of work and we're sending each other memes and just checking on each other we're helping mm-hmm. each other build businesses so it's like it's like real like I'm I'm sticking with the word organic a lot today. But it's it's real organic. Like it's no Genuine it's love. no cut on on mm-hmm. the relationships there. Okay. It's really people that got to know each other and got to find out what you, what everyone likes. Uh you might get a book recommendation from from somebody at your job cuz they know okay, you like this, or you're into that. Uh we're sending each other music. Um, just, just whatever, bro. Like it's supporting really, each other. Yeah, it's, it's real support. You want me to go out? I'll, I'll be there. You know, genuine love, like pe- good-hearted people who are joining together. You know, to help other people, basically, because we're all the, that's the same goal. We all have the same goal to help our patients who are coming in suffering, and you know, looking for a little bit of ease or a better quality of life. We all have the same goal: helping each other, helping others. So super cute. I love it. So now I just got a second one because you guys are saying how everybody comes and supports you and you guys are just like a family. How, how's the environment or more so the general opinion and feeling towards Amendment 3 in your store, like with employees and with customers? Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been mixed over the last couple months. Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, everyone's like very happy. Oh, it's going to be legal. Our and pay's now, go up. yeah. Oh, our pay is gonna go up. Is that what they told you? Yeah. Well, well, and and so our pay, like we got we got a pay raise this year, like a nice one because of congratulations because of uh because of product being sold more and things of that sort. Um, the thing is, they know, like you said, was truly cornering the market the way that they have. Uh, they're not really gonna be giving out new licenses like that, is, is what we've been told. So. The companies that are in it, they're going to see an increase for sure mm-hmm. of patients coming in. So, yeah, there there is a possibility of you getting a, a pay increase, things of that sort. But like I said, like knowing that it's not decriminalized and people that actually fought to get fought to get like uh, things moving in the cannabis world throughout the decades who sat in jails and sat in prisons aren't going to be taken care of. That's that's bothersome. Mm-hmm. I was just talking to a patient the other day, and she was like, I don't think I'm voting yes on that anymore. And I, I was like, uh, what's your reasoning? And she was like, um, you can't grow your own weed? What? And I was like, yeah, that's not a thing here. So there there are people that are starting to see it, though, like based on like what we were saying here on this couch tonight. There are people that are starting to see it that way, and they're seeing uh, that it might not be as great as, as it was being painted to be. 
And a lot of people were disappointed when they heard about them trying to limit the percentage of THC. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's another thing. Because we have, it? bro, you know, there, there are patients that don't give a fuck about the terpene. They don't give a fuck about if it's an indica, sativa, hybrid, whatever. What's the highest THC? That's what I want. So if you're telling people, oh, no, you're not going to be able to get this THC level because you don't need that. How can you tell me what I need? Mm -hmm. I agree with that. That's like telling somebody how much milk to put in your cereal. Bro, you don't know my struggle. You don't know what I'm on. <laughs> like, you can't tell me what to smoke. So, yeah, it's, it's been mixed reviews. I'm, I'm glad to hear that at least, you know, some people are, are noticing the home growth thing because it's even if they don't plan on growing, it's just that, like, limiting your rights mm -hmm. you know? yeah it's just not fair yeah it's, it's honestly not fair but to hear you guys have good experiences in your store i like that no for sure um i feel like the the three ounces has turned a lot of people away too because we do have patients that have like six yeah ounces. They tell you, three ounces is nothing to them yeah i like got one patient that buys like two ounces at a time he's like bro fuck that i'm not coming here every day Mm -hmm. To buy weed. If I'm buying weed, I'm buying Makes weed. Sense though, I'd rather buy in bulk. Why oh, am I gonna come back and buy like a little three point five every single every yeah, I'm not day coming here to buy eight every day. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Yeah. And a waste of money because it comes out way more expensive. It's way cheaper to just get it Yeah, wholesale. Uh, yeah. A half so, a year an ounce. So there are people that see it that way. But yeah, it's um it's it's been mixed reviews. I uh I do see more people that come to the dispensaries leaning towards yes, just because they're thinking uh about the others, and I've had a lot of conversations with patients. I'm like, well, even if it does become recreational, you might want to still keep your medical card because if you think about it, if you're medical, you don't pay taxes because it's medicine. Yeah. And if it's medical, even if it is a three-ounce limit, you're still going to get more based on the fact that you're using it for a medicinal purpose. You're not using it recreationally. So the government's looking at you differently than the next person. Mm -hmm. So they might look at me and be like, oh, you're just smoking a smoke. But they're going to look at you like, oh, you're smoking because you have back pain. So there's anxiety, that as well. Your insomnia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, so there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of mixed reviews on, on how everyone's feeling. And I feel like uh, we're not having people get enough information out of, out of the uh, lawmakers because it's still been a lot of like in the air of what's actually going on as far as the way that the bill is being written. So there is that. Um, like I said all the commercials are like basically uh, aimed the same way. Uh, you know, we didn't speak about it, but that one commercial with the, with the attorney. <laughs> you talk about John Morgan? Yes, John Morgan. Fucking John Morgan. <laughs> his, was, his was funny because like his approach was just like, bro, you don't even sound believable. Like, what are you getting out of this? For me with John Morgan, like with Morgan and Morgan, what hurt to see that was we reached out to them personally mm -hmm. and tried to have their team help us with our petition. Mm -hmm. And their team, let's just say they were too busy to reach back to us, mm -hmm. right? So when I saw him supporting Amendment 3, I knew at that point that it's he It's about has, a dollar. Yeah, he has to have some stake in the company yeah. or they paid him something because this is the same man who helped get medical marijuana on the fucking on the ballot, you know what I'm right. saying? He helped push for that. Mm -hmm. So when I saw him supporting an amendment that one was already introduced as a broken amendment, it, they were breaking the law, right? and the Supreme Court said, fuck it, but run it. Mm -hmm. Dog, if that was the case, we would have said, all right, we want free weed. Like we would have started with that, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because we already knew that we would have been able to introduce all our other policies. right? But no one told us that we could have done that had mm -hmm. we paid enough money we didn't have the 20 million or the yeah. fucking billions to pay them so when i saw him do that i was like damn they really they really sold you out or you sold yourself out because no home grow there's nothing that really covers the patient there's nothing that covers the past yeah and it's just and that's what you know he got on and now he's like hey come support amendment three you know the, I keep seeing it's a it's an older she's an older black lady. She I've been seeing that one as well. You know that's the one who when you say like she says, the weed is dangerous. And there's there's her the and there's and there's an older white lady as well. Oh, I've see, seen both of them. They're pushing the black lady. Yeah, of course. And why? Because yeah, it's we take more of the cannabis. We are more of the market. We're mm -hmm. more of the whole fucking community, 
and they know that we also like our ideas at least i feel within the minority communities hold a lot more when we share them with each other mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like we could share these ideas and now they're like yo i really i'm really taking to what louis said because crack and d also fuck with that it's not mm -hmm. just louis said it whereas right. you know the opposition like one person can say something a hundred thousand people will say that man is wrong and that mm -hmm. person will believe him mm -hmm. he's a diehard fanatic and like no they can't be wrong they're god mm. i think that to us is where they know they don't have to really pander as much to our vote because right. they know that we're the ones who are skeptical we don't trust the government mm -hmm. so how are we going to trust the government to tell us to vote for weed when they have been locking people up for weed people are still locked up for weed mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like like how you mentioned there's people in there now facing 25 to life sentences mm -hmm. over a plant Saddening. And it's saddening, bro. That is, it's, uh, it would be really good to see, you know, more of these dispensaries pick up that front end. And that's mm -hmm. why I asked you guys how it felt about working. Because when I worked at the dispensary, I hated my job. Mind you, we didn't have that family environment yeah. that y'all had. You know, it's different. But for me, what I hated was going to a place, knowing that I was exploiting people, mm -hmm. and ultimately I wasn't getting any of the profits and i was like damn that's mm -hmm. a little fucked up of me too like yeah i would have a problem if i was the one making all the bank mm -hmm. so you look at it now even more as like damn i'm kind of kind of the issue let me fix myself mm -hmm. and when i would go back to work bro you would see it you know people would work up in the morning and i'm not sure i haven't been in a i haven't been in a dispensary since i since 2019 mm. um but the uniforms were truly were gray and then we walk into the right. building and it's white and it's very medical that to me is depressing. See, that's the thing I like. Our uniforms are like blue, we have like, right? huh? Are they blue? No, no we have different t-shirts. It's colorful. Like Look. we got we got teal t-shirts. We got yeah. purple t-shirts. Oh, that's lit. And we, we got, got like monthly, like well, not monthly. Yeah, well, like depending on like events. Yeah, we get like, like different. We get like different t-shirts. Like we uh like for Pride Month, we had some shirts that said uh cute. You're, you're safe, safe with, with us, us. Oh, and it was like it, it made the Pride community feel better. Feel yeah. better about and, themselves. And that's yeah. dope that you guys do that because I remember. You know, other dispensaries doing that, but they were more stricter on their, on their personnel, on their employees. Mm -hmm. Like you have to wear a uniform. Yeah, you know, all of you have to look uniform. Well, like, originally, Satara, from what I heard, was like very cutthroat. Well, not cutthroat, but like cut to the cloth, uh, polo. But they they loosened up and they realized, like, bro, you're selling weed. Like, you gotta make people feel comfortable. Like, you don't have to look like a freaking grandpa to sell weed. You know, like, these people are coming here for the product regardless. Yeah, bro, they would make you go ahead and get a polo, tuck in your shirt. Like, you ever bought some weed from someone with a tuck Bro, in I'm shirt? not buying the polo. He don't, you don't look like a cop. <laughs> you look like oh, a narc. Yeah, like, <laughs> and you see your whole building with them, all white, behind the POS system, behind mm -hmm. the register, ready to show you. That scared me, bro. Yeah. I would look at myself in my uniform, and I'm like, damn, I'm going to fucking sell out. Hmm. Like, why am I doing And I, I know why I did it. I did it for to help people mm -hmm. ultimately so when i asked you guys that you know when you hear it you hear that the environment that you're in is a mm -hmm. good environment yeah. you know because i i doubt i can go to other sateras and get that same type of response oh i'm sure you wouldn't so it's, it's i can like i can tell you for store. sure yeah, your yeah i can store, tell you for like, sure you wouldn't you like you like you both of y'all lucked out on having a good oh, store yeah. oh no for sure 100%. we know I wouldn't it trade our store for the world. like for sure like i love it so you you've known me for years. You know I've been working at Starbucks for years. Yeah. And the like, my my Starbucks employees would come over to Satara to buy weed, and they're like, "Bro, you look so like in, like you're in heaven when you're there." And then you come over here and you're like, "Bro, how the fuck am I here?" And I'm like, "Bro, because yes, I'm I'm serving drugs in both places. Legal, legally, legal legally, I'm selling I'm selling drugs in both places. If you think about it, based on how the law sees it." Yeah. Except the only thing is the law doesn't see sugar and caffeine as a drug, even though they're two of the most addictive drugs. I was about to say, they see oh it God, as yeah, one. So, That's why they so legalized true. it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, my thing is, when I'm at Satara, I know I'm helping people. When I'm at Starbucks, I'm not fucking helping anyone. I'm just giving you something to get you through your day that you really don't need. Half the shit's not even good for you. Oh, I love coffee. So... That's I think that's why I'm more happy when I when I am at work at Satara, and it's the fact of like I said I'm, well, I can't lie I'm I'm in a loving environment in both stores like 
my coworkers in both stores are great people. Mm -hmm. But as a terrorist, like, they're great people, and they're more of people that are similar to me. Like I said, they're all creative. Not only that, I also feel like in the customer aspect, it's not, I mean, we, we do get our, our crazies here and there. Yeah, and but the customers, customers are definitely more cool. But they cool. come in happy. They mm -hmm. leave happy. Like, they're there to get their weed. They're not there to be like, I, I didn't fucking like this the last time that you know how some people in, in, in another industry, like, you know, I, I worked like nine years in the service industry and I had my fair share of uh, upset people, yeah. you know, and you don't really get that as much. Well, even in the in the medical um clinic side you get a lot of angry people too like i want to see the doctor right now i need my stuff today but like in in the dispensary you see less of that people are more like oh you don't have that that's fine give me the next similar thing or what else is gonna make me feel like they just want their stuff they they're they're happy they're happy to get their stuff they're happy to leave with their stuff you know it's not like attention that you will get from like another I feel it, I feel it. Yeah, it's not, you don't have pumpkin spice latte, what the fuck? It's it's none of that. It's like, oh, you don't have this strain? Uh, what do you recommend as similar? What can I get for you? Like, what can you get me? chill. Yeah, so there's there's that. Um, I don't know, bro. It's just, it's just a really, it's a really cool environment to be in. One, because, like, you know you're helping people. Two, because every. 95% of the people are coming in there in a great mood. And, or even, like, we have people that come in there in pain, and they're still not bitchy. Like, they're, they're not. They're excited to get their stuff, yeah. yeah. It's great to be around people that are just good people, bro. Now, I want to ask y'all, do they give you the option to see your growth facilities as employees? Um, There have been employees that have went to the growth facilities, it's we live in Miami. Our growth facilities aren't in Miami like some of the other dispensaries. So for us, we would have to take a trip to do that. That that was my yeah. same issue when I was working at True Leaf. I had to drive to Clearwater. Oh damn! Shit. Okay, it's like four we're, hours. Yeah, away. we're not that far yeah. from there. Yeah, that's what, yeah. that's what they told us. Like you can go see it. You just got to drive to it. Mm. I was like, damn. Did you do it? No, no, I wouldn't have done that either. It was that's, that's the mission. Yeah, bro. I was like, why? That's when I already started getting upset. I was like, why the fuck do I got to drive to Clearwater? Like, mm. why would you guys? So if you, I looked at it. I was like, the Clearwater store is always the first store to get the freshest of the oh, fresh. Oh, of course. So when you really, th when I start, that's when I picked it up. Like right away, I was like, hold on. You're serving the whole state, but you're only growing in Clearwater. Mm -hmm. So that means anything that comes from Clearwater, depending on how long it takes now, it's just getting older. Mm -hmm. You know what I So that's why by the time that it got to Broward in Miami, it was a little bit drier. It wasn't as yeah. fresh. And I was like, damn, bro. So now I, I don't know if they have more more acres. I know that people are starting to go into Homestead. A lot of dispensaries. Yeah, there's a few dispensaries down that yeah, way. A lot of dispensaries was moving down to Homestead and... That Redlands area, which makes a lot of sense. It's, it does. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of farming. Space. It's good, mm -hmm. good land for that. And mm -hmm. that's what I think makes appropriate sense for serving the Miami-Dade. For sure, because this is a huge market. Yeah, bro. It's a South Florida yeah. market. Like, it doesn't make sense for you to get your flour from North Florida, transfer it down, store it, and then sell it. No, mm -hmm. You have it down here. It's acclimated to this part of our climate, of our state. It's going to grow to it. Right. And then you can go ahead and just keep that region. You know, you know what I would say that I like about uh, our store specifically uh, compared to other... Other, maybe other dispensaries in our company and other dispensaries outside of our company is we really don't have flower sit. And I know, like, I'm not going to name any companies, but I know a couple companies where, like you said, they'll grind it up. Liberty if it's Health. not right. They changed their name. <laughs> to air. <laughs> uh, he just, he's so, <laughs> shout out. I know, care. I know one company that'll do like, <laughs> I know one company that'll do like uh, $1 ounces. Because they know that it's like dry as $1 hell. One dollar out. Yeah, was that rise? bro. Uh, yes, it was. I was gonna say the well, name. Well, honestly, but... at that time, you know, I feel like they've improved. But at that time, when they were doing the one dollar ounces, their I had a patient. That's their weed was so sketchy. bad. Very it was so bad. It literally smelled like dirt. But you I see, had a, it did, I had a, it I had a patient get mad at me one time because he walked in. He's like, "Do you guys have anything that's expiring?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> sir." And yeah, he was like, like, "Oh, never mind." And I was like, "Oh, sorry." And that's you know that's the, the, 
ugly part of like I guess our system, yeah. you know, the American system and people just they see things as a dollar value. And that's mm -hmm. what we were talking about, like with quality cannabis or food mm -hmm. or anything that you buy. You know, like you bought that essential water versus getting the pure spring water. Why? Because mm -hmm. you knew that it had these iodine, what does it say? Iodinized. Iodinized hydration, whatever, 9.5 yeah, pH. The, 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 you, the you alkaline paid, and stuff. You paid for all that shit. You know right. what I'm saying? So I, that's what I never liked about the dispensaries and truly was one of those that they would promote sales a lot mm -hmm. because they had so much product they're like yo we're gonna lose out if we don't sell it right away right like i remember they came out when they started with the rosin i don't know if you guys have rosin in your store yeah we have rosin they were doing they were just promoting fucking rosin they just started getting it and the shit came out green really it was green That's and weird. i thought that at first i was like oh this is dope it's supposed to look like this like this is fire but when I really learned from it, I was like, nah, they're not processing it right. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be this color. It's no, supposed it's to be, supposed to be like a, darker or maybe yeah. a little bit more amber. Mm -hmm. But this shit literally looked like a like a booger. So all of us in the store, since that was our first time seeing it, at least, you know, for most of us. Yeah. Bro, we're like, what the fuck? We tried it. We smoked it. We liked it. So naturally, what do we do? We tell the fucking people, yo, try this shit. This shit's fire. You're going to mm -hmm. like it. Then we learned that it wasn't good, so now we look like a bunch of dumbasses. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? That to me was always uh, just kind of funny when it came to the dispensary. But my my last question I want to ask y'all: what what was the thing that got you the highest, and what um, does it? Uh, definitely my first time doing dabs. Yeah. And my first time doing dabs was at a music festival. I was say, like, what's the highest you ever been? It was, yeah, it was definitely this time doing dabs. I was at a music festival. And, um, bro, I was high to the point where I was like, okay, I'm not working for the next two hours. And I would not set my ass down in, like, the, the vending comm area. This is back when I was on the road heavily. I would not set my ass down in the vending comm. And I went to sleep for, like, an hour. And then I woke up and I was like, okay, I'm still high as fuck. But I'm, like, to the point where I can work now. Oh, shit. Yeah. But, yeah, that was definitely one of those times where That's I weird. was like, fuck. Also, the, the Gatorade bottle shit, yeah, uh, that was a time. Bonks? The, bro, it was like the a gravity bomb. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. That one, that one was a time where, you, ever, you know those highs that are scary? Yeah. Where you need CBD to bring you down? Uh, where you think you're about to die? Like, yeah. yeah. I felt that. I yeah. I, oh, if only I had that one time in my life. This, th that experience was like that. I remember someone was like, oh, if you drink cranberry juice, you'll come down. You'll come down. That shit don't work. I drank or a whole milk. bottle of cranberry juice. <laughs> or milk. I used to hear milk. Well, milk is more if you're on like uh, psilocybin and shit like that. Yeah, it's they supposed tell to help. Chew, mm. chew peppercorns. Yeah, fuck what? that. <laughs> uh -huh. Bro, there's so I'm many like, things. Yeah, but yeah. Cool. Black pepper will help bring you down. So if you chew some black peppercorns, you'll get brought down. Man. Like, nah, man. That's what about you? Me, I think the worst high that I've ever had was one time I had a gummy from True Leaf. It was my birthday. And it was like a sativa gummy, I think, something champagne. And I was like, I remember, and I smoked a couple blunts. I had some drinks, and then I popped the gummy, and I thought I was gonna die. Like, I had to lay down, and I was like sweating cold. And my friends were like, Are you okay? And I, I never got gummies from True Leaf again. Mm. I, no, and also, a little, the, you guys just saw this little red pill. Me and my homegirl took it. Um, to go to some park oh my god like a, a theme park yeah. and we died like Bro. we left early we died it if was it's the, the worst. same thing that i'm thinking about those were 50 the milligrams red, the little red pills yeah they're 50 like milligrams two, we took like two each and we died that's hilarious oh wow yeah we died damn it was really so. bad it was a bad experience we we're like i'm never taking this ever again mine was i got a 2000 milligram heart uh, Lucky Charm, no, Fruit Loops, edible. Mm. I knew it was going to be an edible story. Yeah, bro, because it had to be an edible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at this point, we were pushing our limits, like me and my other co-workers, by taking RSO straight to the face. Okay. So we would go before stutter work. Who can do the most RSO? And I just had to be that guy. I was like, oh, me. So <laughs> a whole shot of fucking, like the whole tube, bro, mm -hmm. smacked as fuck. I was like, oh, oh man. High as fuck. When I ate this fucking edible... That RSO didn't hold a fucking candle to it. I literally ate it, and I'm watching TV. And I only ate it because I was like, what else am I going to do with it? Like, I'm right. like yeah, I'm, I just got it. Like, mm -hmm. someone just gave me a 2,000 fucking milligram edible. Yeah, just because they, yeah, they just wanted to. And I was like, 
maybe it's not 2,000 milligrams. Maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to find out. This mm -hmm. has I eat it, bro. And I'm just watching TV. And I feel my body do something that I know it doesn't do. And that's like, betray me. And all of a sudden, bro, I feel I'm starting to lean. Mm. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And like, I'm trying to watch TV, but my body just keeps leaning. And all of a sudden, I'm like, no, stay up, stay up, don't fall asleep. I could feel my body literally like shutting down. Mm. And I went and like, I just turned and I like, I fell into the couch, bro. Yeah. And I was stuck high as fuck. And a little bit, part of me was like starting to get scared. I was like, damn, what if I like suffocate? Like, what yeah, if I just like, scary. I'm stuck here. And I'm like, no, I can do this. I, and it was such a struggle for me to just turn my head mm -hmm. and bro, I couldn't move. Man. Like, I just sat there and I was like, I it's literally, so terrifying. it was terrifying, but also funny as shit. Cause I've <laughs> never experienced that. You know mm. what I'm saying? So like to feel your body just like, no, what are you doing? Legs, get up. Shit. I can't, oh, my head. <laughs> that was, that to me was something bro. I was like, I want to recreate that. That's funny. So we have a coworker who, uh, does this the edible sandwiches yeah with rso in the middle he loves to do that and, I'm like, You're crazy. <laughs> and it's hilarious because one time uh this patient came in and she was like yeah edibles don't really hit me he was like you want to try something <laughs> and if anybody ever says to you you want to try something don't try <laughs> stay away from he that. goes he, went to, he, went crazy. <laughs> he goes get two of these gummies and put a rice grain in the center he said, eat that. He said, you don't have any plans today, right? She said, no, I'm just going home. The next time I saw her was like a couple months later, and she goes, oh, my God, me and my <laughs> boyfriend thought we were going to die. <laughs> and I was like, I told you to do it. Why listen to him? One time he gave me a joint, and it was like full of crumble, and he's like, oh, smoke this. And I'm halfway in. like I, I, I want to say I had like four hits, and I was like already super zooted, and I was like, oh, my God. And I had to go to my other job, and he's like, I put crumble in it. And I was like, why would you give that to me? Now I'm going to be retarded at my. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I'll like put rosin in it and I'll just smoke it with people. Sometimes I forget to tell people like, yo, there's wax in here. Mm. So they just smoke it and all of a sudden. Shenanigans. <laughs> I hate they're over here thinking they have the strongest sweet they've ever had. That's dope. But yeah, we're going to wrap this episode up. I appreciate having both of you. Louis, it's been a pleasure. Thank Dee, it's you. been a pleasure. Such an I honor. appreciate you. Uh, my next episode is going to be with the Camino gang. We're going to speak about uh, the projects that we have coming up, uh, what we have planned between the end of this year and next year, what we'll be working on. And I think you guys are going to enjoy the episode, and I'll see you then. Correct.